Last time Iowa State beat Missouri here in Ames was 1996. It is a cold and clear evening in Ames, Iowa. Welcome back to Jack Trice Stadium as Iowa State brings in an offense averaging better than 400 yards a game. They are high powered. And with more on that, the third member of our broadcast team, here's Eric Clemens. Eric? All right, Ron, high powered because they offer balance. When they go to the ground at Iowa State, they call on Ennis, they call on the menace, Haywood. Haywood comes in tonight, leading the Big 12 in rushing, averaging 119 and a half yards a game. Also ranks 11th nationally. And just about every other aspect of offense, 5'6", J.J. Moses is really a giant. He is second in the Big 12 conference, averaging over 146 yards a game of total offense. Look for him on those short passes over the middle to try to exploit an injury-riddled Missouri secondary. Coach Dan McCarney needs production and points from his two major offensive weapons to have a chance to become bowl eligible tonight, guys. And there is 47-year-old Dan McCartney, originally out of Iowa City in his sixth year here at Iowa State. He has done a wonderful job the last couple of seasons turning this program around. And Larry Smith, 61 years old, out of Van Wert, Ohio, graduate of Bowling Green. He's in his seventh season. And the record overall, his team has been plagued by injuries this year. Marcus James and Ricardo Rhodes set to take the opening kickoff. A strong win of about 15 to 20 miles an hour. It goes out of the end zone. Missouri will begin first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. The Missouri offense has lost two quarterbacks and three wide receivers already this year to injury. The quarterback, redshirt freshman Darius Outlaw from Powder Springs, Georgia. He'll be making his fourth start of the season. On the line, finally getting healthy, Globerman. He moves from left tackle to right guard. And at running back, Zach Abram will get his first start of the year. And the coaches hope he provides a little energy to that Missouri offense. Outlaw has been getting better and better. Took over for Kirk Farmer, who was injured in the Nebraska game, broke his clavicle. Farmer is dressed out tonight, not expected to play. Brandon Ford, the tight end in motion. They try Abram left side, and he is going to be stacked up by Kevin Durandi. Now the Iowa State defense, they are led by the solid defensive line, which we just saw. The line of Reggie Hayward, James Reed, Ryan Harclaw, and Kevin Durandi are good. The linebackers, Derek Walker gets the start. He's a former backup quarterback in the secondary. The quarterbacks of Austin and Powers. Yeah, baby. They're good covers. Second down, we'll call it 11. Outlaw throws off his back foot. Incomplete intended for Eric Spencer. And Outlaw takes a seat early on in the ballgame. And, and you know what? Iowa State won the toss in this ball game. They decided to defer. What that does, it makes Missouri take the ball the first half, and I think that's a smart move. You have Darius Outlaw. We talked about the fact that this is only his fourth start in the ball game, so you put the pressure on him early on, especially when he's on the road in this ball game. Dan McCartney knows the importance in this, and you can see Missouri not been very successful on third down conversions. Third and 11, two wide receivers to the right. Outlaw seeing some pressure, steps up, has running room, has the first down and about eight to spare and then some. Still on his feet. Up to the 43-yard line, finally brought down by Adam Runk, the strong safety. Coaches of Iowa State were concerned of this young man's running ability. He showed it there. And there's Andre Reggie Hayward rushing the passer. Does a T.E. stunt. He comes underneath. He has a free run at him. What you have to do, you have to break down on a quarterback who has good running skills. They haven't seen him a lot on film. This guy can move. You see a nice 360 move there in the middle of the field. Good downfield blocking. Pickup of 23. Ball on the 43-yard line for the Tigers. They have played exceptionally well in offense in the first half of the last few ball games. They've been just falling apart in the second half. Zach Avery, no place to go. He is wrapped up. We talked to Bill Cubitt, the offensive coordinator, he said when we start this series out, what we'd love to do when we first get on is throw a lot of different formations at him. That time, you had the tight end, both wide receivers on the same side. The guy on the end of the line on the right side was Justin Bland, number 72. Cubitt really believes that he can move these guys around just enough that he helped Garris Outlaw out a little bit. On second and nine, Outlaw will try to roll out. A little short intended for Eric Spencer. One thing Missouri did last year, last week against Texas, they went back to having a huddle on offense. This week, Bill Cubitt said, we're going back with no huddle, but it's not to be fast offensively. Yeah, it's not about trying to speed the game up because really what they want to do, they actually want to slow it down. Darius Outlaw at the line of scrimmage, he will have one check. 
off of the play that is called. He doesn't have to make a lot of reads, but he can take his time. You see the play clock right now is down to about 10 seconds. So he's not hurrying up, but it's a no huddle offense. Four wide receivers. You saw Hayward switching sides. Outlaw. Pass right at the 50-yard line. Caught, knocked out of bounds. It'll be about three yards short of the first down. Terrence Curry, the sophomore out of Delwood, Missouri. On the reception, and Missouri will be forced to kick it away. But not a bad opening drive for Missouri. They get the ball out to midfield. Now, if they get a good punt and get this ball out inside the 10-yard line, it becomes a battle of field position. There you see Gilpin out of Jefferson City, Missouri, averaging a shade over 41 yards a kick. This has been a problem for Missouri covering kicks. Opponents are averaging just about 15 yards on the return. J.J. Moses standing on his own 12-yard line. Here comes the rush. It's a fake. No, Gilpin steps up and gets it away. Moses signaling the fair catch, and he'll take it at the eight. Gilpin did a nice job. Looked like he was going to take off. Instead, he booted it for 41 yards. Iowa State offense coming off their lowest offensive total in 19 games last week. Sage Rosenfels, the quarterback, a prep legend. He's strong and he can run. The line has experience with three seniors and a couple of juniors. They've only allowed four sacks. And they'll start three wide receivers tonight. J.J. Moses, the big play man. And, of course, as Eric mentioned, Ennis Haywood leading the conference in rushing. Banks, the tight end, now switches to the right side. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. They run the reverse. Moses burned him on it last year. He's up to the 23-yard line this year. Danny McCamey coming from that defensive tackle spot, joined by Antoine Duncan to make the stop. Check the reverse out, and it looks like an option play going to the right. Moses is small enough where you don't see him until he has the ball in his hands. Nice play to start off that misdirection. We'll keep Justin Smith at home for probably the first half now. Pick up a 14 on the play. Rosenfels out of Maquoketa, Iowa. Haywood tries the right side, may have gotten up to the 25-yard line as we take a look at the Missouri Defense injuries have been a major problem this year, but the line is very good. The line of McCamey, Bigucci, Harden, and Smith, they can contain a quarterback. Linebacker only Pat Duffy has started every game for the Tigers this year because of the injuries. And in the secondary, Julian Jones and Antoine Duncan, both are very solid cover men. But this defense has been hurt by injuries. Jamonte Robinson is starting linebacker out. Sean Doyle, he's nursing an Achilles problem now. He is out. On second and nine, Rosenfeld's first pass of the day, and it's picked off. Sean Ain replacing Sean Doyle, the sophomore out of Redondo Beach, California, with the interception, his first of the year. And when we talked to Mo Ankney, the defensive coordinator, said Sean Ain has speed to run from sideline to sideline. Time you're going to find him right in the middle of the field. He's there, those inside linebackers. He's just going to drop underneath the curl pattern and pick it off. Excellent pass drop. He gets back in the lane there. Can't play it any better than that if you're a linebacker. And Missouri gets great field position. Rosenfels never saw Ains. And the Tigers first and 10 from the 25-yard line. Zane Gilmore now in the I-back spot. One back set for the Tigers. Three wide receivers to the right. Gilmore right side. Slashes his way down to the 20 before Ryan Harklaw wraps him up, the senior out of Humboldt, Iowa. For Missouri, the offensive keys are kind of simple. And the first one is you have to be able to keep your head. And, and when you do that on the road, you keep your head. You don't get flustered. Number two, make the gimmicks work. We've seen the gimmick work by ISU. And no turnovers in this ballgame. They have to play a clean ball game on the road. And they have to score touchdowns, not field goals. Straight ahead running inside the 15 down to the 13-yard line. That'll be good enough for a first down. Zach Abram, the ball carrier. And this is where Missouri has been hurting. Their regular field goal kicker, Brad Hamrick, is out with a broken collarbone. They'll be using Justin Scott, a true freshman out of St. Louis. He's never kicked a field goal before. And last week against Texas, they got in the red zone three times, but they had to settle for two field goals and a touchdown. Bill Cuba those. says you can't have that. See those odd formations? You got three tight ends lined up on that side of the ball now. 
Whitlock calls his own number, looks for the end zone, has a man overthrown Eric Spencer. That was the gimmick, the wrinkle that we just talked about, the keys that they have to make work. You have a man wide open, you get just a little too flustered. Watch the movement to start this way, the quarterback, then he's gonna come back out in this direction. And you get a nice toss by Eric Spencer. He tosses that defensive back in that direction, and there he is, he's wide open. Lay that ball right between the two and the four. Second and 10 from the 13. Left side. Scooching his way up for a couple. Zach Aber, the red shirt freshman out of Wentzville, Missouri. They want him to provide some energy, and one of the reasons he does that is he never stops moving his feet. Well, his legs are so close to the ground, they can't stop moving. He's only about five, seven and a half. Zach Aber, he gets behind that pile. He continues to push. That's a good running back, too. And you know what? He's re-earned this job by his performance in practice. Now Iowa State a little confused defensively. Running guys on the field, and they may have to burn a timeout. I think they've got 12 guys out there, and they needed to call that timeout. So with 9.53 left to play in quarter number one, we are scoreless in Ames, Iowa. If you buy one of those huge new SUVs, you might want to plan on a new garage, too. But with Dodge Durango's best-in-class available Magnum V8 power, plenty of room inside, and just right size outside, you don't have to rearrange your life just to fit an SUV into it. Durango. Different. And just right. Now get low financing on Dodge Durango. Introducing something totally new from Verizon Wireless. It's called New Every Two. We'll give you a new digital phone up to $100 value every two years for free when you sign up for a two-year agreement. So you'll always have the latest in wireless technology. It's never been easier to keep up with what's new. New Every Two, only from Verizon Wireless. Join in. Important possession for the Tigers of Missouri. Third down and seven from the 10-yard line. Looking, has some running room to the five. Touchdown, Missouri. Darius Outlaw's second rushing touchdown of his career. Excellent job by Bill Cubitt, the offensive coordinator, getting Darius Outlaw in situations that he can succeed in, giving him that ability once he leaves the field, you say, okay, Darius, you're gonna roll out to your left. If it's not there, because of the flow, it's gonna be there immediately to the right. And there's Bill Cubitt talking to his quarterback, saying, okay, you've done a good job. That's just the start of the ball game. Let's continue it on. And Justin Scott, the true freshman out of St. Louis, tacks on one more to Darius Outlaw's touchdown. Outlaw showing his running ability. Iowa State goes one way, Outlaw goes the other. Tigers lead by a touchdown. Just a bit of magic. Oh, you gotta see it. So like the unexpected. Perfectly perfected. Ahead of your head, I said. Our stuff is what dreams are made of. Time to bring it on home. Digital palm quarter with three-way PC link from Panasonic. Just slightly ahead of our time. Oh, just a bit of magic. If you want to buy a car and save some dough, there's just one name you have to know. Big Joe. Big deal in Joe. Right now at Highland Park Volvo, Big Joe can save you big money on a brand new 2000 Volvo S80 sedan. Lease one for just $489 a month for 36 months. To get a price that's on the mark, see Big Joe in Highland Park. Big Joe. Big deal in Joe. Highland Park Volvo, 250 Skokie Valley Road in Highland Park.
Welcome back to Ames, Iowa. The Tigers of Missouri have taken a 7 0 lead. 24 yards, five plays, just over a minute and a half. It is a short kick. J.J. Moses, a little bit of running room up to the 31 yard line, and that's where Iowa State will take over. Eric Clemens, it has been a crazy day in college football today. Absolutely a crazy day in college football, especially in the Big 12. Ron, as you see, Oklahoma scoring 31 unanswered to beat Nebraska. More on that in a moment. Texas beats Baylor. Texas Tech over Kansas. Colorado over Oklahoma State. And Texas A&M in a mild upset, 26-10 over Kansas State. Before the year, guys, everybody looking at that Kansas yeah. State-Nebraska game, and they forgot about Oklahoma. They shouldn't have. Well, of course, we will have Texas Tech and Texas next week right here on Fox Sports Net. 7 o'clock Eastern time. Zane Gilmore. All right, you say. And as Haywood trying on the right side and no running room. Hey, what an interesting story. Of course, uh, you, this is the first year Iowa State has had to play without one of the Davis brothers, Troy or Darren. And as Haywood coming in last year and put up a couple of yards, everybody had knew he had some potential. He's more of a north-south runner, not afraid to make some contact. Thought about changing his name to Davis. You know that, Dick. That's exactly one of the, <laughs> another Davis brother. Pick up a four on the play, second and six. Rosenfels thought about it, gets it to Haywood. He bangs his way over the 40 to the 41-yard line. Justin Smith, the junior out of Holt Summit, Missouri, the leading tackler on the Missouri Tigers with the stop. When you have a player of great ability, you tend to run at him, and you tend to do different things. They don't even block Justin Smith on this play, number 96. He forces the pitch, and then he gets back, and he makes the tackle on the ball carrier. Granted, he had some help from his friends, but both guys would quit after they had done their job initially. And short by maybe a foot and a half, if that. Third down, and we'll call it one. Joe Woodley, NSA Wood in the eye formation. Haywood goes in motion. They give it to the fullback. He will get the first down. Woodley, the redshirt freshman out of West Des Moines, Iowa. I don't know. I'm playing at home. Pretty confident about my defense. I take a shot right there. Play action pass. Try and throw deep. And then I come back and I get that foot on fourth down. Why not? You're going with the win. Dan McCarty, only this seventh time since World War II. Iowa State comes into this game with a record of 5-2. and two. He is so close last year. Difficult losses to Texas and Kansas State. This year played well versus Nebraska for three quarters, only to come up on the short end of the stick. Only the A&M game is the only game they've been blown out this year. Rosenfels quick swings it out to Moses. He parts the defense to the 40. Still on his feet, down to the 33-yard line. The smallest man on the field, J.J. Moses. 24 yards on the reception. Steve Looney, the offensive coordinator, said we only script about six plays to start the ball game, but in those initial plays, we want to get the ball in the hands of J.J. Moses because he kind of sets the tempo for this ball club. He's the little guy. He's the little engine that could. He does a lot of big things with that small body. You can see his effort and how his guys rally around him. right side. Look out. To the 10, tries to stay on his feet. They'll mark him out of bounds at the 10. Clarence Jones tripped him up. Ben Bodette slow to get up. The left guard, the senior out of Lake Elmo, Minnesota for Iowa State. But he is up. He's walking back to the huddle. Pick yes. up a 23 Steve play. Looney not checking out the uh, grocery list, but he has all the plays that he wants to run on there. First and 10 plays, second and seven plus, second and short, second and real long, third and short, third and medium, third and extra long. But you know what? They don't have like third and 23 plays on there. Because when no. you get third and 23, you just look yeah. around and say, okay, let's run it up the middle or throw a nice safe pass. There's Big Ben going off to the sideline, being helped by the trainers. We'll get an update on his condition when it becomes available. Steve Loney, though, is third tour like of duty with Iowa State. This is his alma mater. He was actually the offensive yeah. coordinator at Iowa State during Dan McCartney's first three years, went to Minnesota. His daughters go here. He came back to watch a game last year and said, gee, I might want to come back. <laughs> Iowa State in the red zone. See the numbers. High snap. To Haywood, to the 
two to the one. Pickup of nine on the play. He'll be about a foot and a half short of Fader. If you're going to play middle linebacker, Jamonte Robinson, he's been out with some injuries, hasn't been 100%. You see, he's just a little tentative there. If he had taken on the guard, stuffed the guard, that then gives the running back nowhere to run. He tries to run around the blocker. Probably he has a high ankle sprain. He doesn't want to put extra pressure on him. When he runs around him, he just creates a bigger gap for that running back to squeeze through. That'll be second down. They can get the first down. Probably a moot point. Robinson hurt that ankle in the Nebraska game. Hasn't been well since. Second down and inches. Midway through the opening quarter, Missouri and Iowa State. James Lofton, Eric Clemens, I'm Ron Thulin. Glad you're spending your Saturday night with us. Straight ahead. Touchdown, Iowa State. Rosenfels with his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. the sign of a big team and a team that's made some strides. You give up a touchdown and you answer it on the next drive. You know what was interesting when we talked to Sage Rosenfeld yesterday, he said the guy he liked playing, watching play when he was young was Joe Montana because of his leadership abilities. Not physical skills, but just the way he handled himself on the field. Carl Gomez for the extra point. Hits the upright, no good. Gomez, that was only his fourth extra point attempt of the year. Mike McKnight is the normal kicker. But Dan McCartney decided to give Gomez, who also punts a shot of kicking it. You're saying Gomez is unnormal because he's left footed? Could be. <laughs> At Old Ivy State U, where yesterday's tomorrows meet today's future past, the eternal flame of inner knowledge burns brightly within the hearts of all her sons and daughters. And daughters, and daughters. But then again, there's this special place we call Mizzou. It prepared me for life after sports, and since then, its medical research saved my son's life. Sure, you can graduate and leave Mizzou, but it will never leave you. Hollywood's biggest stars in the biggest game of the year. Make me a believer! Any given Sunday on pay-per-view. No intensity. In a special director's cut with never-before-seen footage. No victory. Libertyville Mitsubishi has the hottest cars in town. Galants, Eclipses, Monteros, Montero Sports, Diamantes, and Mirages, plus the best selection of pre-driven Mitsubishis. We put the fire out on high prices. Zero down, zero interest, zero payments until spring 2001. There's only one, Bob Roman. Bob Roman's Libertyville Mitsubishi, just five minutes from I-94 on Milwaukee Avenue, Libertyville. The Chicago Bulls select Elton Brand from Duke University. Yes! Rookie with the exclamation point. Can you believe that? How about the room? Face to face. Look at Brand out hustling after. Look at the big fella. Unstoppable. Bulls fans, the shape of things to come. Fells takes it in from about the two-foot line. But the extra point was no good. Carl Gomez, the senior out of Miami earlier, practicing with that left foot. He was the new extra point and field goal man, replacing McKnight. He told us on Thursday he's very comfortable kicking. He said he doesn't mind if he bunts or plays kicks, but that may make him a little uncomfortable. But during the commercial, Dan McCartney went over to him and he told him, just relax. Again, kicking with the win and kiss that one goodbye, as Bob Prince used to say. And Missouri will take over again from their own 20-yard line. So now Missouri comes in. Darius Outlaw, you think he got a little confidence in that opening drive? He got some confidence in the opening drive when they moved out to midfield. Then they take advantage of the turnover by Sean Ain, get the ball in the end zone. Now you start on your own 20. Once again, a victory is getting that ball out to midfield because then you play field position football again. The Darius Outlaw, when you watch the other guy go off down the field, now you know it's your job to let your team answer. One thing Iowa State did not want to do coming into this game is get overpowered, and they wanted to control the long balls. They forgot about Darius Outlaw's running ability. 
straight ahead running. Zane Gilmore. The junior from Tampa on the carry. Tomorrow we're bringing you the tailgate party with the NFL this morning on Fox Sports Net, the most raucous, rocking Sunday morning pregame show anywhere. A full two hours of madness to get you ready for kickoff. Of course, Chris Myers will lead the bunch, joined by comedian Jay Moore as he returns to the mix. That's the NFL this morning at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific, only on Fox Sports Net. Outlaw with the option, back to Gilmore, nothing doing. Broke down early. Mark Timmons coming up from the free safety spot to sort of wreak a little bit of havoc. Also, Jordan Carstens, the redshirt freshman out of Bagley, Iowa. Now, we've talked to the Missouri coaches enough, and they know that one of the things that they don't have in running back is a tremendous amount of speed. But with a play like that, it's almost a keep them honest play to you'd say, yes, we will run wide. We may not do it well, but we will do it to you. You must respect it. Iowa State with seven in the box. Outlaw goes to throw, has a man wide open. Caught. Justin Gage to the 35, and he is shoved out of bounds. When we talked to the Iowa State coaches yesterday, they were concerned of Justin Gage, the mismatch on his small corners. Yeah, and Jamarcus Powers, you see him off in coverage. He's off because he's not a big guy. He doesn't want to get tangled up with him, and as soon as he gets in that zone, just uses that big body. Powers tries to put his hands on him, and that's when he goes down. It's just cool enough tonight where the field is slick. Pickup of 42 yards on the play. Gage at 6'5", Powers at 5'8". They try to run it. Zach Avery benched for a couple of games because he was having trouble holding on to the football. Came back in a strong way last week. At 64 yards on just 12 carries versus Texas. Picks up about nine on that play. John Skodania, the defensive coordinator, said we want to attack Missouri. They're trying to attack him. They're almost running past the running backs and giving these guys easy holes to run through. Well, missed tackles have been a problem. Zach Abram gets hit, still on his feet, and he's going to be plowed under at about the 33-yard line. Matt Ward made the first hit. The sophomore out of Miami, Florida, who started as a true freshman last year for the Cyclones. That time, the game plan pays off. When you're going to penetrate, like Skill Daney wants his guys to do, sometimes you'll guess correctly. Everyone has to control their gap. When we talked to Reggie Hayward, he said every guy has a responsibility. You have one guy who doesn't do his job. It's like that little Dutch boy trying to get all the cracks with the 10 fingers. You get 11 cracks, you get in trouble. On third and three, Outlaw. Looking, looking, has a man in the end zone. Gage can't come up with it. pass intended for Justin Gage is incomplete. Gage was open. And Gage doubles as a basketball player. He almost looked like he had his hands made out like they were a hoop. But those two pinkies together gather that one easily in. Watch him at the tail end of this. See the arms go out and around instead of extending out for the ball and drop right through his hands. And that'll bring in Justin Scott. Only two years of high school football trying his first collegiate attempt. They spot it at the 33-yard line. This will be a 43-yard kick. Jared Gilpin's the holder. Good snap, and it's blocked. Right back into the hands of Missouri. Gilpin. Ab Turner came in to knock it away. Great. Gilpin came back up with it. Awareness by Gilpin. Get that ball. Get up the field. Almost picked up the first down. He is close. You know, guys who don't know the rules don't realize that you can run the ball if it doesn't advance past the line of scrimmage. Now they're going to have to measure. Let's look at it again. Watch Ab Turner coming in to block this. Yeah, this ball just comes off flat, 43 yards, probably the outside of his range. But a great job by Hayward at elevating, getting up to block that ball. Hayward at 6'5". When Hayward came in here, they said he looked like a basketball player. As a freshman, he was about 210 pounds. He's up to 250 now. You see he can still get up in the air. He's got some hops, and they were just a couple of inches short of the first down, so Iowa State gets a break, and they'll take over. He's got hops, and he's got guns. <laughs> Boy, and he's got some hands that are huge. Had a chance to spend some time with him yesterday, our crew, and he is a young man that has his sights set on the NFL, and I think the majority of the people believe he can play on Sundays. So the Cyclones trailing by 176 with 449 to play in quarter number one. Take over on their own 24-yard line. Five-step drop. Rosenfels into the flat. Pass is incomplete. 
Chris Anthony, the intended receiver. I, uh, Iowa State offensive keys in this ball game. Get the crowd back. Last week, disappointing loss against Texas A&M. You must run for 150 yards. That tells that you're controlling the line of scrimmage and just be Sage. Well, Sage Roosevelt, fifth year senior, he's been very productive all year and very steady, and that's what they need, that steady, confident hand from their quarterback. And they want this offense to play hard. They felt they didn't play hard versus A&M last week. Haywood looking for some running room, splits the defense, maybe picks up four out of the play. In fact, usually the Iowa State Cyclones, they have a tradition of an offensive MVP where they sign a helmet. And last week, Steve Loney telling us, well, we didn't have anybody MVP. Yeah. We didn't have a helmet sign. He, he didn't even put the pin out for them to think about nope. signing it. You know, talking to Haywood on Thursday, he told us that the, the team was mad. They weren't finger pointing. They weren't blaming people. They were mad because they felt they could play a lot better offensively in the, than what they did last Saturday. Third down and seven for the Cyclones. Rosenfels overthrows his intended receiver again. It is Chris Anthony. Yeah, two bad passes. Both to Anthony tried him on the left side, a simple out pattern. That time on the right side, when you don't have underneath coverage, that should be just like warm-ups. You just throw that ball in there. Sometimes the court quarterback will start looking at the defensive back, thinking, well, he looks like he's tight. He's going to break on the ball. Your arm strength is enough 95% of the time to get that pass in there. Gomez will also be the punter, averaging 38 yards. Yet they have a kick block, but Missouri is capable of doing it. And here they come. A flat kick. You gotta feel these. You just don't back off of them like that. Hits they're, at the 32-yard line and stops dead. And they're lucky that that ball died because you, yeah. you see it time and time again. That ball just continues to roll. A good punt returner, someone who's confident in their hands, will catch that ball. Kick went 41 yards. Well, next on Fox Sports Net College Football Saturday, we've got the conclusion of our doubleheader. Washington State takes on number 18 Oregon State in a Pac-10 battle. Make it a full day of college football right here on Fox Sports Net. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, and one of the great under 800 meter runners, Lewis Johnson, on hand. And you can see right Ken, there. Ken Simonton. We'll be seeing him. We're seeing the leading uh, rusher in the Big 12 tonight. He's the leading rusher in the Pac-10. Gilmore, not much running room on that left side. Gilmore, the junior out of Tampa, Florida, the former Florida high school player of the year. Tomlinson at TCU, just shy of 200 yards rushing today, about 199. And with the upsets in the top 10, go TCU. It'll be close to that number six spot for that BCS. Dennis Francione doing a great job in Fort Worth. Take the toss out while well, looking. Throwing complete up to the 41-yard line. Caught by the big tight end, Dwayne Blakely. He had only one reception in the last three games. And Missouri said, we have to find a way to get to this young man because he is quite talented. Well, when you're a young quarterback and, and all you've been doing is backing up, throwing the ball to the wide receivers, you kind of forget about a guy like Blakely. And Blakely had a fantastic season in 99. He had 22 receptions, scored six times. So he was expecting a big 2,000. It hasn't unfolded that way for him, but he's continued to block well in the running game. You saw what he can do in the passing game right there. Third down and two. Brandon Ford, a tight end in the backfield. Outlaw keeps it. Look out. Scrambling for his life. Reaches up ahead to the 42-yard line, but they mark him out at the 40. A.T. Boston, the sophomore out of Tarpon Springs, Florida, comes up to make the stop. When you run a bunch formation like they are, when you have three tight ends in the ballgame, everyone is within six yards of each other from center out to the end to the other tight end spot. The defense is bunched up too. So when you play action fake, you run that ball again in the middle, guys are still going to be there. You're going to play action a little bit, spread some people out, use some motion. Milton's first punt with 40. Moses, who averages just over 14 and a half yards on the return, is back to receive it. Kicking into a stiff win. Short kick, very short kick. And that takes a bounce for Iowa State right at the 35, bounces forward to the 37 yard line. First Halloween coming up Tuesday night. I'm gonna go as James Lofton. <laughs> That guy have a man growing out of his chest there. 
I'll say it again. I'm going to go as James <laughs> Lofton, my hero. <laughs> Uh, Verizon presents first and ten all season long on Fox Sports Net College Football Saturday. Verizon making the world of communications a whole lot simpler. That is good Missouri defense. You're not going anywhere. Justin Smith on top of the pile. Leading the attack though yeah, is Pat, Pat Mangucci. Mangucci. On the bottom of the pile. He moves the Right guard Lorenzo White weighs what is white weight? Well, he says 340. Came here as 360, <laughs> but he's got the great nickname. And has been close to 400, but that time in Gucci, if you get low, you can move a big guy, and that's what he did. He got lower and he got off the ball quickly. Lorenzo White, they call him Big Sexy. I thought that was Eric Clemens. Frozen <laughs> fells into the flat, complete. Chris Anthony, the senior out of Bettendorf, Iowa, the former walk-on. With his 23rd catch of the year, Antoine Duncan on the coverage. One thing that Iowa State wanted to do offensively is be consistent. They want about a, what, 60-40 pass run ratio? Yeah, but the other thing that they want in addition to that, they want four yards on first down. And you saw kind of no gain on first down in the series prior. They had a three-yard gain on first down. If they don't get that second and six, then they feel like they're a little bit out of sorts. They are ranked 23 as far as offense is concerned in the NCAA. Third down and four. Quick drop, quick pass, first down, Cyclones. Anthony again up to the 45-yard line. He was isolated on Javante Robinson, the linebacker. Sage Rosenfeld this season, he's been very productive, and I think the most important part is he's produced wins for this ball club. You can look at all the other numbers, the 52% completion, the seven touchdowns, the almost 1,600 yards. It's really about the five wins that he's been able to produce for this ball club this year. The man worked on his game. He was quite the prep star here in Iowa. All state, baseball, basketball, football. Also played a little tennis. Straight ahead running. Crossing the 45 down to the 43 yard line. You left out track and field and, and all those other things. But I asked him about that. I said, now how small was the school? Was it, was it like a one room schoolhouse where you just played? He said, no, it wasn't that small. He said, I was good. I wasn't great at all these things. But, you know, I love doing them. And I think his family said he just wanted to get out of the housework, right? Yeah, because they had an 11 acre farm where they raised organically grown foods, which he grew up on. Second down and eight from the 44. Final play of the quarter. Straight ahead running is Michael Wagner, the Richard freshman out of California. And that'll end quarter number one. Missouri was the first to strike courtesy of Darius Outlaw and his run. Iowa State answered with their quarterback. We are at 7-6. 15 minutes are part of history. your business you can use labor ready temporary labor get some help call 1-800-24-LABOR for the first time ever your favorite ford sport utilities are packing zero nine for 60. the 2000 ford explorer expedition and excursion they're back and they're serious zero nine saves you over sixty two hundred dollars in interest on explorer zero nine saves you over eighty two hundred in interest on expedition Plus, a new excursion with Zero Nine saves you over $9,200 in interest. They're bringing out the heavy stuff. Zero Nine for 60. Only for a limited time at your local Ford store. Just a bit of magic. Oh, you gotta see it. So like the unexpected. Perfectly perfected. Ahead of your head, I said. Our stuff is what dream. I'm made up. Time to bring it on home. Digital palm quarter with three-way PC link from Panasonic. Just slightly ahead of our time. Oh, just a bit of magic.
football Saturday on Fox Sports Net. We have come to Jack Trice Stadium in Ames, Iowa, as we are on Halloween Eve. Three days before. Eric does that better than me. Ooh. Three days before Halloween. Along with Eric Clemens and James Lofton, to I'm Ron Thulin. <laughs> we have one quarter in the books in Missouri, leading Iowa State 7-6. to six. We're glad you're with us tonight as Iowa State looking to become bowl eligible and get their first winning season since 1989. Haven't been to a bowl since 1978. Wagner, the lone setback. Missouri jumping all over the place. Flags fly. And that'll be good enough for a first down for the Cyclones. Terry Turlington, our referee tonight. Good job by the voice inflection. Sage Rochenfeld probably just cleared his throat a little bit. Top of the line. <laughs> well, they jumped. It is a very windy night, we should say, here in Ames, Iowa. But this is the strangest wind I think we've ever seen. Here's Terry Turlington. All sides on the defense, five yard penalty. That's a first down. Now that's on the left side of the stadium. In the middle of the stadium, the wind is blowing straight ahead. Now you go to the right side of the stadium and the wind is blowing left to right. I'd say that would be considered swirling. That is in the far right corner of the stadium across from us. It's Halloween. It's, it is kind of a little scary, isn't it? First and 10 for the Cyclones on the 34-yard line of the Tigers. Moses in motion. He's got the ball to the 30. Spender still on his feet. To the 10. Inside the five. Touchdown. Sometimes you see great work from an offensive or defensive unit. That time, an excellent job at the tail end of the play by the officiating crew. The back judge was on the goal line. He made sure that Moses was over. There was a side judge who was positioned along the sideline. He was making sure that Moses did not step out of bounds. The two looked at each other, said he wasn't out of bounds. He was in the end zone. They signaled touchdown. That is his second rushing touchdown of the year. This one covered 34 yards. And the officials are going to call a timeout. I think Missouri is going to call a timeout. Let's take a look at J.J. Moses again, the senior out of Waterloo, Iowa. Nice job by Moses. You can see his ability to do that little spin move. He probably learned that from his dad, Jerry Moses. And then you see him get into the end zone. We talked about Sean Ain, his speed. His speed cost him that time because he took a couple of steps the wrong direction. Then he overran the play and missed the tackle. See Moses right along the boundary. So you see him along the boundary. He doesn't step out of bounds. He vaults into the end zone. He uses his right arm to catapult him. And an excellent job by the officiating crew. They team up to make that call. J.J. Moses' dad, Jerry, is... James mentioned was an Iowa State running back back in 72 73 and he was a prep star here in the state of Iowa. Yeah, I think JJ broke his Chevrolet dad's career rushing mark over at Waterloo East State High School. 1331 yards. See but when his dad played every football field was uphill. They had to walk 40 miles <laughs> in, in the snow, the snow with uphill. No shoes. No snow. Yeah. No, right. No snowshoes either. <laughs> <laughs> I think Iowa State has a chaplain that'll listen to that story. <laughs> Gomez for the extra point. This one's true. So with 14.30 left in quarter number two, J.J. puts him on the board again. 13-7, our score. Got a little SUV and a big load? Good luck. But Dodge Durango is different. With two big, beefy Magnum V8s to choose from, you can pull up to 7,550 pounds, which puts Durango ahead and your boat behind you. Durango, different and just right. Now get low financing on Dodge Durango. It's NFL this morning on Fox Sports Net. Oh, yeah! You should get up and hang out with us because we're going to have some fun. 
Let's talk some football. Don't cut to me. Chris Myers and the Breakfast Bunch get it going. You were great on Saved by the Bell. And you never know who'll stop by to mix things up. I like the hair today, Chris Myers. You look a little like Bob's big boy. It's broken down in name calling up here. <laughs> okay, we get the point. NFL This Morning. We bring the tailgate party to you. Tomorrow at 10 on Fox Sports Net. Going deep with Chris Myers. Dealing with the, the celebrity part of it. And when does it become too much? This is not easy. This is no longer a sports problem. It's a social issue. Let's talk about the facts. Is he a danger to society? I have a lot to be mad about. Right. Well, who does it? The sport itself may need a complete overhaul. I knew that it couldn't get any worse. So who would you say you trust the most? There's so much at stake now. It's about getting it right. Going deep with Chris Myers. Sundays at 7 on Fox Sports Net. Blackhawks Wild, tomorrow at 6.30. Now Larry Smith's troops were up seven to nothing but they've given up 13 unanswered points to the Cyclones and you can see what Missouri has done in the first half second half this year they've been outscored 122 to 52 and in the last two weeks those numbers read 50 to three in the second half. McKnight Mike McKnight the sophomore out of Fort Dodge Iowa kicking off for the Tigers a short kick. Still on his feet, Spencer. Check out Marcus James, and he spins his way up to the 40, 39 yard line. And that is where the Tigers will take over, first and 10. You talk about a good little athlete, Marcus James. While he was in high school, he high jumped 6'6. Six, six. He ran the hurdle to 13'9. And here's a guy who's only 5'8, and he pole vaulted 15'6. Not bad. Pretty, pretty good little athlete. Out of Liberal, Kansas. Missouri once again the no huddle offense they have four wide receivers to the left interesting formation outlaw the quick pass complete Terrence Curry makes his way over the 40 up to about the 43 yard line when you use this formation everybody knows you're coming with the quick pass to one of these guys out here so the other guys have to come in and they have to do the blocking if they get those blocks you get a seam just like Vince Lombardi talked about and you're able to run directly up that seam there's the seam that runners going up there second down and short yardage straight ahead running up to the 45 yard line up to the 46 yard line. I think sometimes big offensive linemen, they look over, they see the down and distance marker, and they think, okay, second and short, so I'll just block for a short time. <laughs> That's it. That's it. And they're going to have to measure. We've got a moment. The Iowa State football players are very active in the community here in Ames, Iowa. And before the game, a number of the players came up and wanted to make sure we sent out a very special wish to a couple of fans of theirs that they've been visiting in the hospital. Caleb Miles and Katie Nelson watching at home. And the Iowa State players are thinking about you two youngsters tonight. We want to make sure you knew that. They did not get it. Third down. Less than a yard. Try to spread them out. Go quarterback sneak here. This man right here in the middle of the screen, number 41, he's going to be responsible for trying to knock the quarterback down. First down, Missouri. Ab Turner tried to go over the top, figured the quarterback would go over the top, but quarterbacks are a little smarter than middle linebackers. He just went to the side, picked up the first down. So if you're the Missouri Tigers right now, as you can see, Ab trying to clog up the middle, going over the top. Are you starting to feel a little confident offensively that you can move the football? You know, I have to believe that these guys feel really good about their game, but you're right. They do need to get touchdowns when they have a good drive going. Gilmore, left side, gets into Cyclone territory down to the 48-yard line. Now, we Pick talked about five. their lack of speed. That's not to say that these guys aren't fast, but both Zane Gilmore and Zach Abram are built, oh, a little closer and wider to the ground than a lot of tailbacks, but they're powerful guys. That time you run that quick toss into the short side of the field. Gilmore gets those shoulders turned and heads directly up the field. Good gain of five yards on first down. Four wide receivers to the right. They try that same play. Swing it out. 
Curry can't come up with a handle on it. The sophomore out of Delwood, Missouri. It's so important to be accurate on your short throws, especially throws where you want the receiver to be able to run after the catch. This one is blocked better down the field, but as a right-hander, that ball is going to curve in this direction when you throw it. That's exactly what the ball does. Curry has to realize that, but Curry's been playing defensive back. Yep. Most of his career just moved to wide receiver after a glut of injuries. And John Dowsman tore his ACL again. Brandon Barnes hurt early in the season. Travis Garvin was dismissed from the team. For Curry now wide receiver. They asked me if I could play, and I said <laughs> no. Third down and five. Pass complete to the tight end, Brandon Ford. And that'll be good enough for the first down. That is Ford's third reception of the year. And he is a big one at 6'3", just over 260 pounds. He picks up 12. You know, I think that the formation sets, the double tight end sets, all those are confusing the Hurricane Cyclones just a little bit, but they're getting excellent pocket protection. You do that, your quarterback can see down the field, throw the ball very easy. Blakely did a nice job here, the decoy. Outlaw. Not much running room for a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's send it back to our college football Saturday studios with Kevin Frazier. Guys, wild finish between seventh-ranked Oregon and Arizona State in double overtime. Bruce Snyder decides to go for two instead of the tying point after the fake no good. Sun Devils lose by one, 56 to 55. What a heartbreaker, Kim Frazier. They threw the ball to Todd Heath, their all-top conference tight end. He tied, tried for a one-handed catch. Ball fell on the turf. Justin Gage on the reception, and he pays for it with a shot from Adam Rugg. One thing Darius Outlaw has done this week is he improved his confidence. He started feeling a little more confident. Well, one of the reasons is Kirk Farmer has returned to practice after breaking that clavicle against Nebraska, and he kind of has been a calming influence on young outlaw. And it's just nice to have somebody who has gone through what you're going through that you can talk to because Bill Cubitt, the offensive coordinator, he's there. He's in charge. He's not supposed to be the quarterback's friend, and believe me, when they make a mistake, he's not their friend. Third down and four for the Tigers. Outlaw's pass incomplete. Spencer had it, couldn't bring the foot down. Boy, that was really close on the far sideline, and you get on that far sideline and all the Cyclone band members and team members start going up and down. Here it goes up. All you need is one foot in college football, and you can see that foot is out of bounds on the line. That's eyelash. Feet are too big. And they're going to attempt a field goal. Justin Scott back into the game. They're marking it. Gilpin will put it down at the 40-yard line. This will be about a 50-yarder, just shy of that. But there's Reggie Harewood right in the line of flight. The last one was blocked. This one won't even get close. And the youngster out of St. Louis making his collegiate debut. Can't get the 50-yard field goal to go. And Iowa State will retain their lead. That is brought to you by the world's most popular ATVs, Honda, best on earth. Along with Eric Clemens and James Lofton, I'm Ron Thulin. Welcome back to Jack Trice Stadium on a chilly October evening. Don't forget to set your clocks back tonight as we end daylight savings time, which means we have to get early tea times from now on, not the late ones, James. <laughs> First and 10 on their own 32 yard line for the Cyclones. A little razzle-dazzle. Hayward gets a block from Rosenfels. Gets 
the first down and two to spare. He takes a shot right at the end, but not before he got the first down. You, know, you run a reverse sometimes, but you can also use misdirection just by tossing the ball. That's on a nice job by Ennis Haywood. He's going to start in this direction, then he's going to come back here, and the quarterback, Sage Rosenfeld, is going to be his lead blocker. Now, I don't know if that instills great confidence in you when the offensive coordinator draws it up, but Rosenfeld does a nice job in blocking Jamonte Robinson. You know, last year we saw that very same play, and Sage Rosenfeld leveled the block on Missouri, which actually led to a touchdown. Straight ahead running. Dennis Haywood, the junior out of Dallas Carter High School. He's another one of those north south runners. Let's go back to that last play. And I think the line has to love it when the quarterback lays a block. Yeah, but it's not very often when your quarterback at 6'4, 221 is larger than the linebacker at 6'2, 203. Now, Jamani Robinson, if he sees it again, he's going to try and even the score. Well, behind Drew Brees, they consider Sage Rosenfeld the second-best senior quarterback available in the upcoming draft. Pretty heady comparison. Michael Wagner, once again, the redshirt freshman who stepped in for Ennis Haywood in the Oklahoma State game. Haywood had bruised ribs, didn't play, and all the young freshmen did is rush for 170 yards, which is a freshman rushing record. And what makes that impressive? How about Troy and Darren Davis didn't do that when they were freshmen? <laughs> I wonder if I could borrow one of those. The temperature has yeah. changed just a little here in Ames, Iowa. It's the, it's the wind chill factor. It's third down and six. Missouri with nine on the line of scrimmage. Here they come. Rosenfels floats it up in the air. Caught. It is complete to Chris Anthony. Larry Hollenquist on the coverage. You know, you just talked about the NFL and where Sage Rosenfeld ranks. Here he takes a quick drop. He knows everyone is coming, but he throws a very catchable ball. You lay it on that outside shoulder right along the boundary. That is textbook. I don't care if you're Joe Montana, yep. Dan Marino, you take that throw right there. Pickup of 19 on the play. Banks in at tight end. And he got some air under the ball. That's something he has been working on. He's been working on his touch. Rosenfeld keeps it. We got 13 Leans points. forward to about the 31-yard line, maybe picked up two on the play. But here is a young man that is really, if he was a basketball player, you'd call him a gym rat. He studies the film. He was very frustrated after the A&M game. Knew he didn't perform to his level of expectation, but he's not afraid to go right back in and start working on it. Well, I liked when we were sitting in the meeting with him, and we asked him, what's the best pass that you throw? He had a hard time thinking about his best pass. He said, my best pass is a post pattern. And then we went up to the board, we diagrammed different places to throw it. Very heady young man. He also said his favorite pass is a completed one. <laughs> Straight ahead running. Haywood with some running room. Inside the 20-yard line. Gary Anthony and Antoine Duncan finally tripping him up. Lorenzo Wright, number 76. You're going to see him lined up right there, and he's going to wipe out number five. David Monroe. David Monroe weight goes about 230. We talked about big, sexy Lorenzo White going close to four bills. But when it gets cold, he has to put his winter coat on. Oh, that'd be scary. That's good blocking by that offensive line of the Cyclones. First and 10. They're in the red zone at the 14 yard line. A little spring draw. Hayward, running room, touchdown, Ohio State. That right side of the offensive line, Andrew St Andy Stensrud, Lorenzo White, Ben Burns, the center, just opened up a gaping hole. Ron Thulin, I'm thinking you could have run through that and gained two yards. At least. <laughs> <laughs> but number two, Ennis Haywood takes it all the way to the end zone. Not bad running for Ennis Haywood. Almost at 100 yards, and we haven't even cracked the first half yet. Gomez on to attempt the extra point. Kick is down, and it is good. Dan McCartney pumps the fist. He likes it because his prize running back is his fifth rushing touchdown of the year. Iowa State leads 20 to 7 when we return. We'll send you back to Kevin Frazier at our college football Saturday studio with a preview of our Nissan halftime report. 
When you need a score on any game, call Toll Free Scores at 1-800-686-4446. The fastest scores anywhere. Absolutely free on a recorded message. Don't sit through commercial after commercial just to find out if your team won. Call Toll Free Scores at 1-800-686-4446 and find out fast. All major sports straight from the stadium with no commercial interruption. Everything a true sports fan needs. Call now, 1-800-686-4446. Hear that? Someone just scored. Find out who. Only half the story. Oh, my goodness. Now, the nightly show that delivers more coverage. Oh, man. More analysis. This team has unity. More opinions. This one's just too good to be true. Plus, live interaction where you get to sound off. How did this show get out of control? Our team covers the sports scene like you've never seen. What a hit. The National Sports Report at 10 and midnight on Fox Sports Net. Miss it, miss out. Somebody you want to have carrying the football making his way over the 30-yard line to the 30 four-yard line is Garrett Hill the tight end that's where Missouri will take over and they are in dire need of using this remaining eight minutes and six seconds of getting something going offensively considering the drought that they've really had in the second half the last few weeks but well, they've moved the ball semi-effectively they haven't been able to cash in when they've had drives and had a field goal block you had one for 50 yards that was short this is a ball club they don't have their regular kicker they don't have their regular quarterback or wide receivers but Darius Outlaw has made some plays with his feet. Now it's time for the other 10 guys to step up and play at his level. Now they're averaging less than three yards of play on first down. Outlaw looking, looking, floating it up, and that'll be overthrown. Outlaw's pass. Now the North Division, it has been a little crazy today. Eric, those standings, I'll tell you what, it's anybody's ball game. Anybody's ball game. And look at Iowa State down there in third coming into the night at two and two. Conceivable, they could really make a mark in the North Division in the Big 12 Conference overall, guys, and get a real nice ball game if they get a couple more victories throughout the year. Nebraska, Oklahoma, nobody really looked at that game. They still look at Nebraska, Kansas State, though, as the one coming up in a couple weeks. That'll be on November 11th, those two teams meet. Outlaw throwing in the flat to Justin Gage. Complete. Almost pass complete to Justin He jumps Gage. forward up to the 48-yard line. That'll be good enough for a first down. Jamarcus Powers out of Lamarck, Texas. We got a flag Junior down. College on the coverage. We do have a penalty flag. Yeah, they got an extra hit on Outlaw. They should outlaw those hits on Darius. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> Terry Turlington will talk about it. Missouri trying to snap that seven-game road losing streak the last time they won away from Columbia. That was October 2nd of last season versus Memphis. Personal foul, dropping the pass, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, first down. Here's that late hit again. Number 95, William Judd coming in and just burying him right in the back. If you're Dan McCarney, you know that this game is so important. And one thing he has really done over the last couple of years is still discipline on the field where they don't have those penalties that can cost a team. Gage in motion. He's got it, looking to throw it. No place to go. Covered up immediately by Nigel Tharp, a senior out of Detroit, Michigan. Tomorrow on America's favorite pregame show, J.B., Terry, Howie, and Chris are joined by weather girl Jillian Barbieri, who tells us where it's hot and where it's not. Plus, our sarcastic sage Jimmy Kimmel makes his picks and gets in his licks on the boys. It's all part of the wildest NFL pregame show on TV. Fox NFL Sunday tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, only on Fox. Outlaw looking to throw it, pressure's on. Gets away from one, incomplete. Intended for his fullback, Joe Cherambolo. James Reed was putting the pressure on from that defensive tackle spot. Cy the Cyclone likes it. And now it is third down at 15. The crowd is standing at Jack Trice. This is enthusiasm. I don't think this school has felt in a long, long time. We're talking about Darius Outlaw being thrown in the fire. He's in the midst of it. You must come up for the positive play right here. Five wide receivers set for the Tigers. Three to the left, two to the right. Penalty flag is thrown. Jumping before the snap, and that play's dead.
71. <laughs> Ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Remains third down. Well, Terry Turlington, you told us it's Joe Glaberman, little NFL referee in there. Little NFL and all of us. <laughs> you know, th this is where not getting in a huddle kind of hurts Missouri because the quarterback, Darius Outlaw, needs to be able to look at his guys in the eye and say, okay, guys, let's settle down. I'm in charge here. I got things under control. And the young man's really been concerned of taking over that leadership role. Third and 20, again, penalty flags. Again, there's movement. Got Justin Bland, number 72, leaning just a little bit. Dead ball. Mm. Ball starts on the offense. Five-yard penalty, third down. Now they had problems with penalties last week against Texas. Four illegal formations. They had guys jumping around, and Larry Smith's team worked on it this week. They had a great week of practice. Despite their record, they continue to work hard, but you can't shoot yourself in the foot when it's third and 15. And you got third and 25 now. You take your shot. You throw this ball all the way into the end zone because you can still punt it. You have the wind at your back on fourth down. Outlaw scrambling. Iowa State no. picks it off. Yes. Intercepted by the Cyclones. Their eighth of the year. Mark Timmons with his second. The redshirt freshman out of Bradenton, Florida with a pick. Excellent job by the offensive line up front. They give Darius Outlaw the ability, the time to look right, to look left. But you do not make the cardinal mistake. You never throw the ball late down the middle. Look at the pile there. Darius Outlaw steps around it. And then you see the late throw down the middle. Defensive backs break on the ball better than offensive receivers. Receivers always want to just stay in there and make the catch. Nice job by Crittenden, by Timmons breaking on that pass. And yeah, you saw Bill Cubitt, the offensive coordinator, explaining what went wrong and not to do it again. Rosenfeld's looking for the home run ball. Has the man complete. Anthony inside the 10. I love it when quarterbacks give us the real scoop the day before the game. We asked him, what's your best pass that you throw? The post pattern said completion at first, but he met the post pattern. Nice job throwing this ball on the line and getting it out quickly because the free safety's back, Clarence Jones, but he zips this ball right past him. Don't question Rosenfeld's arm strength. That covered 52 yards, the longest reception of the year for Anthony. They keep it on the ground looking for Pater as we go inside of six minutes in the second quarter. Missouri scored first if you just joined us, went up 7-0, but the Cyclones have countered with 20 unanswered points. That's why we are at 20-7. to seven. This is where Iowa State just wants to keep piling it on. They want to do some celebrating tonight, especially for this crowd of almost a sellout, close to 43,000 on hand. Second down and goal from the four. From the eye. Rosenfels pitching it back. Hayward steps in, touchdown. Second rushing touchdown of the night for Ennis Haywood, the junior out of Dallas, Texas. Excellent cut by Ennis Haywood, but if you're number eight, Clarence Jones, you use the boundary as your friend. That time he turns it back inside, but he doesn't get a shoulder into him. Ennis Haywood is a physical running back. He's not a little scat back. See him, he keeps his shoulders square to the goal line and dips into the end zone. Haywood now 98 yards rushing the football on just 12 carries, and they're going to go for two. They missed their first extra point of the evening. Gomez hit the uprights, so and now they're going to try to get it back. Two wide receivers to the right, and Sage Rosenfels wants to talk about it. He's going to burn a timeout. They'll have one remaining here in the opening half. But it all started out with Rosenfels pass in last week versus A&M. One of the things we talked to Dan McCartney about yesterday is that they had opportunities to score, but Sage Rosenfels didn't complete that pass. Tonight he did. Yeah, they've been able to hit on the big plays. You've seen the ball get in the hands of J.J. Moses early on this ballgame. So 
Steve Looney has done just about everything that he wanted to do offensively when this ball game started. He's been able to run the football extremely well, play action pass, drop back pass, screens, and the gimmicks have worked for him also. Well, there is very little doubt that Iowa State knew what they had to do tonight. Dan McCartney told us that this team comes into the game focused. This football team has done uh, the things that I've asked them to uh, throughout this season, Ron. They've had great focus. The leadership's been fantastic. Uh, we haven't looked ahead. We haven't tried to look behind, look back, look forward. Just look at the thing that's facing you this week and get better, improve, uh, and do everything you can to try and be one of the real success stories in college football. You know, when Dan McCartney took this job a few years ago, his fellow coaches said, you're committing professional suicide. He said, Ron and James never for one minute did I believe that. And he hopes to have a little chuckle about that come the end of this season. He knew he, he, knew he wasn't a professional, huh? <laughs> 270 yards tonight, 279 last week. Much better performance. They're going for two. Rosenfels looking left, throwing into the corner, incomplete. Craig Campbell can't come down with it. 26-7 is our score. The Cyclones lead in the second. Just a bit of magic. Oh, you got to see it. Slightly unexpected. Perfectly perfected. Digital palm quarter with three-way PC link from Panasonic. Oh, just a bit of magic. Rent-A-Car. Ellie's renting again. And Enterprise picked her up again. She said Enterprise picks her up free. Free? Free. Now that makes renting easy. Mm -hmm. Pick Enterprise. We'll pick you up. Dennis Haywood is sixth rushing touchdown of the year. The Cyclones have up their lead to 26-7. Final 5-21 to play in quarter number two. Marcus James again. Have a penalty fly thrown as he makes his way up to the 25-yard line. Well, I think the penalty flag may have been picked up. Eric Clemens, Dennis Haywood, he has had quite a night tonight. He certainly has, Ron Thulin, and he's a story of patience. He went to the powerful Dallas Carter High School program. James Lofton, Big Smooth, knows something about that. Never a featured back there, lightly recruited, and, of course, Iowa State very happy that he came here. Even had to have the patience of playing behind one of those Davises and playing through an injury last year for that great opening game, guys. Now, Zach Abram knows what it's like to play behind somebody. He started the year playing behind Zach Gil or Zane Gilmore. He picked up 16 on that play. But Haywood was very patient last year. And, and talking about the, the talent level at Dallas Carter High School, they call it the combine. You know how the NFL yeah. scouts go to Indianapolis, they take all the college players. They say going to that practice is like looking at a combine. They had 18 players that about two years ago who were playing in the NFL. How about Jesse Armstead of the Giants? Not bad. Zane Gilmore, he tries the running game, the right side. Good running effort now by the Missouri Tigers as we close inside a 4.45 to play in the second quarter. Gilmore, not the flashy running back of the two. Joe Cherambello, a little slow to get up. Big fullback, lead blocker. You, you stick your head up in there. You have little regard for your body. And that time, I think he got a little ding. The trainers are out in the field. He, he tried to get up, walk, took a couple of steps, and went back down to one knee. He's up again now and trying to make sure he's okay. I think it's just essential that Missouri has got to get back to a good, solid running game. Right now, they have more yards passing the football than they do running the football, but the problem is the Tigers are 7-24-1 and one under Larry Smith when they pass for more yards than they rush. And I think coming into this game, we are giving out candy to, to little girls tonight. But I think that Larry Smith would love to get back to a little more power football or at least make it a little more balanced. Second down and three. They try the run again. Bouncing out 
to the outside. Still on his feet, Zach Avery. Matt Word on the stop. Matt Word out of Miami, Florida, just a sophomore, big number 46. How about Matt Word when he was growing up? He, along with his brother Mark, who now plays in the NFL, they used to play two on two football with Troy and Darren Davis. Not too bad, huh? Did they ever make any tackles? <laughs> <laughs> they probably never touched them. <laughs> of course, their cousin Barry Ward, a former NFL running back with the Kansas City Chiefs and Minnesota Vikings. Penalty flags for Trump. Now, you know what? Justin Gage, number 12, moved. He's the flanker. He moved, he reset himself. You're supposed to be able to reset yourself if you're off the line of scrimmage. No premature call by the official there, the line. Speed. Nevertheless, it will push him back. What, you don't agree with me? No, I agree. <laughs> I know. You're, you're bigger than me. I agree. I, I agree with you all the time. Do you think the hand signals, there's a lot to think if you're Darius Outlaw instead of calling basic plays? Well, he has those wristbands on, so they can point out a number on the wristband. He can look at the wristband and then call the play. The tough thing is he has to then decipher the formation and the personnel that should be in the game. First and 15, he keeps it being chased. Still on his feet. Nice job getting away from Adam Rung. Also, Derek Walker, the senior out of Houston, Texas, Blinn Junior College. Derek Walker, the former backup quarterback to Sage Rosenfels, now playing a linebacker spot on the pursuit. You know, the funny thing about Outlaw, we saw him in his first opportunity when uh, Kurt Farmer got hurt against Nebraska. We didn't think he was as fast as he's shown us tonight. That's right. And, and I just believe in that first game that his knees were knocking so much he couldn't show all of his ability. This guy has really improved in the, in the month that he's been playing. And I think they simplify things a little bit more for him to see. You know what that means? That means that they take about two plays out. That's probably it. Outlaw looking. Still on his feet, lets it fly, pass is complete up to the 33-yard line to Eric Spencer, that the is, junior out of Houston, Texas. That is excellent poise. You're rolling to your left, the hardest direction for a quarterback to roll. And then there's that little escapability at the end of the play. Makes the guy miss, but he doesn't lose the fact that this is still a pass play. Gets the ball out to Eric Spencer. Excellent job by Darius Outlaw. Pick up of 12 on the play. Spencer's first reception of the evening. Now Iowa State jumping around defensively. They would wanted to come in and confuse Outlaws. So far they haven't. Avery. Keeping the legs churning, holding on to the football. Adam, Adam Runk on the stop. Aaron Crittenden, number 74, is back in the starting lineup. He's been out with some injuries. He's going up against Reggie Hayward. Just puts that big body on him, passes him over to Mike Hayes, number 63. And that is a great job by the left tackle and the left guard. You start with one guy, and then you pass him down because they had a stunt going. So Crittenden came off, got the tackle, passed the end down to Hayes. Excellent job by the offensive line. Second and five. Straight ahead running. That time, an excellent job by James Reed, number 52. Never before have I seen a defensive unit where the defensive end, Reggie Hayward, is number one in tackle, mm -hmm. and number the two in tackle is James Reed, number 52. Normally, your leading tackle is a middle linebacker, a free safety, an outside linebacker. These two guys, you can't run away from them yeah. because they have the speed to get to you, and you run at them, you think Reggie Hayward doesn't have the size, but he can funnel the run back in, and James Reed becomes the cleanup man. The last three games, those two have combined for 71 tackles. Third and four. Into the flat, has a man, incomplete. Gage had it and dropped it. Demarcus Powers was on the coverage. That was a catchable and a must catch ball. And it looks like Gage is just not comfortable with his hands, sticking those things out. He wants to get this ball into his body. It's a well thrown ball. But see him go up. When you leave your feet like that, you're trying to cradle a ball in. Catch that ball in your hands easily, and you have a chance to turn up the field when you do catch it in your hands. With 2.06 to go, facing fourth and four. Missouri is going for it. Four of nine this year on fourth down. Outlaw steps up. Has a little bit of running room. Has the first down inside the 20. Inside the 10, down to the seven-yard line. Ab Turner and Jamarcus Powers had to finally track him down from behind, but not before the young redshirt freshman 
showed us some razzle and some dazzle. In the Missouri Tigers media guide, there are about three or four lines on Darius Outlaw. Trust me, next season, be full of accolades on this guy, the way he stepped in, his escapability, his ability to run and conduct this offense far bespeaks the four games that he started in his career. Avery looking for the end zone. Touchdown, Missouri. What a drive by the Tigers. The majority of it on the ground. And that quiets the crowd quickly as we are inside of two minutes to play in the first half. A few Missouri fans making the trek from Columbia. One of the things that Larry Smith talked about, he said, you know, our players have played hard through this whole stretch. I have no doubt that they'll continue to do it because we're in this together. We know what we've lost in the terms of players, but they haven't lost it in terms of effort level. And the extra point is good with 145 left in the second. Larry Smith's troops are still fighting. They trail by a dozen. More taste, more variety, all you need is 99 cents. Introducing the new 99 cent BK Cravers menu, including our Bullseye Barbecue Deluxe, Chicken Tender Sandwich, and Tasty Mozzarella Sticks. Just 99 cents every day. From the goal line to the sideline, Football Today delivers the ultimate news program devoted to the NFL and college football scene. Football Today, weekdays at 6 on Fox Sports Net. There is renewed enthusiasm in Ames, Iowa, among the students and the community, and for good reason. The Iowa State Cyclones program on the verge of getting a winning record, but they still have a lot of football to play tonight as Missouri's tacked down a touchdown, and they trail just 26-14 with 1.45 to play in the opening half. Very impressive drive by the Tigers. They could have pitched the 10 early here in the second quarter, and they didn't do it. Speed up to the 25 yard line. But the key play on that drive was that fourth down and four situation. It's hard to explain how well he plays on this one play because he looks, he's thinking, I need to throw the ball on fourth and four. And then after he moves twice, he says, okay, I'm going to get it with my feet. And on the touchdown, it's all Zach Abram. Watch this nice spin move at the end, keeps his balance. When you're built low to the ground, it's hard to get knocked off your feet. And they, I mean, they took his legs out from under him. But those stumps, he was still able to roll on. Them. How about Outlaw with 68 yards running the football on just seven carries? <laughs> Movement on the right <laughs> side, Andy Stensrud, whose dad Mike played at Iowa State, had a great NFL career and was a former tight end. His first year as an interior lineman. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Thought he could hide. Thought he could just turn a little bit and no one would see him. When you're 6'7", 280, I don't think you can hide very easily. High school, he caught almost 90 passes. Came to Iowa State really yeah. as a basketball player. Yeah, he has 30 receptions here in his career. Scored five touchdowns. Playing tight end prior to this season. Made the switch to help the team. Keep it on the ground. Haywood switches hands with the football. Crosses the 30 up to the 32-yard line. Just a reminder, coming up at halftime, our Nissan Halftime Report with Kevin Frazier, Kellen Winslow, and Artie Gigantino. And, of course, the trio will talk about the battle for number one as Oklahoma with a big win today. And the top ten, it was crazy, and we had some thrillers. They'll have all of that coming up on the Nissan Halftime Report. Haywood again on the draw. Steps out of bounds just before the 40-yard line. This is un-Missouri-like for the Tigers on their defensive front, but you have to credit the Cyclones. I mean, they're getting off the ball, and we talked about Big Sexy, number 76. He's moving his feet better. What he's learning, he's learning how to play at this level. This is a big guy who's always been bigger than his opposition. He played in high school, he was bigger. 
bigger while he was at junior college. Now he's stepped up yep. to the level where the guys are at his same skill level, but he's learning to play hard every down. A little difference between Juco and Division One. Rosenfels has a man over the middle, and it is incomplete. Intended for Craig Campbell, the junior out of Santa Fe Springs, California. How about the rushing game, though, of these Iowa State Cyclones today? Already, Ennis Haywood with 117 yards running for Dan McCartney. I've been real impressed by Ennis Haywood because you can tell he has great vision. He'll start to his left or to his right, and he'll cut away from where the, the blocking scheme is designed. But that also tells you that the blockers on the backside are doing their job. They're not just saying, okay, point of attack, this is time for me to take a playoff. They're not doing that. And this is an offense that had four big plays tonight. Looking for another. Rosenfeld swings it out. And right there to wrap him up is Hurry's David Monroe. Nice job by Monroe. You're in man-to-man -man coverage. You're assigned a blitz, but in that blitz, it's kind of what you call a show dog. If they show that they're going to pass, you dog. But when your running back breaks from the pack, you follow him. Nice job by Monroe, recognizing that his guy was a primary receiver, not a blocker in that blitz. Now I think if you're Iowa State, as we're inside of 40 seconds, facing third and 13, you just don't want to do anything stupid at this point. And I'm surprised Missouri's not going to call a timeout. They have two remaining. Well, you're still looking at Sage Rosenfeld, someone who can pick up a third and 13. You don't want to give them the opportunity to make a big play and then proceed for a bigger play after they cross midfield. Now the Boo Birds have come out on the delay of game. I think they want their offense to go ahead and move down the field. Now, if you're Missouri, you say, okay, what, what can we do defensively to guarantee that they won't make a third and 18, and then we can try and go after the punter? Well, they'll probably only have to snap it one more time because the game clock is running. Actually, they may not have to snap it. Well, Missouri has two, tie two timeouts, and they're just going to let this thing That's go. It. Which is probably the smart play going into a swirling wind. Yeah, you're not up this close on defense, so you back off. And Haywood, oh! when you're getting chased because somebody may be catch you. I think Satchel Paige said that and Ennis Haywood does a nice job in not looking back and trying to get as many yards as he can, but not enough time to get in the end zone. Well, Haywood takes it down inside the 10, but not enough for Pater, and he will head to the locker room with an excellent first half. 177 yards rushing on 15 carries. That one covered 60 yards, and Eric Clemens is with Dan McCarney. Well, Dan, your team fell behind early, but you showed a lot of character and came back. Your assessment of the first half? Well, it was just sloppy. You know, offensively, we're doing some good things. When we can run it, we're pretty balanced. Uh, then it opens the passing game, and I like the way our offense is moving the ball way too many missed tackles on defense Eric as you know sloppy tackles gonna they're gonna get points on the board we gotta get that short up second half all right good luck to Thanks you coach in the second half Dan McCartney's boys leading at 26 14 here at the break now time for the Nissan halftime report let's send you to our Fox College Football Saturday studios and Kevin Frazier Kevin Eric thanks a lot and Missouri dodges a bullet there at the uh, on the final play welcome inside our College Football Saturday studio in Los Angeles for the Nissan halftime report alongside Kellen Winslow and Artie Gigantino I'm I'm Kevin Frazier, and Kellen, is there a shot that your Missouri Tigers are going to be able to stop, somehow stop, Iowa State? Well, Darius Outlaw is playing great football and keeping Missouri in this ballgame. Some exciting plays, some big plays. Yeah, you know, don't, don't underrate now this Iowa State attack. They do a lot of good things with the misdirection. And don't forget, they're 5-2. and two. They're a good team. Very good point. We have had a great day in here sitting down watching the games. We're going to bring you the highlights in a moment. Life is challenging. Challenging. I am strong. strong. Win or lose. Everyone play. We're ready. We're ready. Yeah, we're ready. The bull's young guns are ready to go. But the number one pick stands in their way. The Bulls battle the Nets. Friday at 7 on Fox Sports Net. Rich Bentley didn't have a long career like his brothers Max and Doug. 
In fact, Reg only scored one goal for the Blackhawks. It was a goal, however, unique in NHL history. And those in the crowd that night understood the significance when the stadium announcer tallied the score. Bentley from Bentley and Bentley. Blackhawk Hockey, always an original. If you want to buy a car and save some dough, there's just one name you have to know. Big Joe, Big Deal and Joe. Right now at Highland Park Chrysler Plymouth, Big Joe can save you big money on a brand new 2000 Chrysler LHS. Lease one for just $3.59 a month for 36 months. To get a price that's on the mark, see Big Joe in Highland Park. Big Joe, Big Deal and Joe. Highland Park Chrysler Plymouth, 250 Skokie Valley Road in Highland Park. After an illustrious 10-year NBA career, this former Chicago Bull is still making his points. It's Norm Van Leer and Eric Goodman on Chicago Sports Tonight, a half hour before every Bulls game on Fox Sports Net. In five billion years, Earth has never seen anything like it. The Honda Rubicon. 500 cc's of extraordinary power and the most advanced automatic ATV transmission to ever run the planet. The Honda Matic. When you're the best on Earth, Earth is your only competition. Craving more taste? More variety? All you need is 99 cents. Check out the new 99 cent BK Cravers menu with eight items including our Bullseye Barbecue Deluxe, Chicken Tender Sandwich, and Tasty Jalapeno Poppers. Just 99 cents every day. What is the technology behind broadband? Texas Instruments Programmable DSP. Technology that transforms telephone lines into DSL internet pipelines. From the world leader in DSP and analog, Texas Instruments. Football Today delivers the ultimate news program devoted to the NFL and college football scene. Weekdays at 6. Welcome back to the College Football Saturday Nissan Halftime Report with Kevin Frazier, Kellen Winslow, and Artie Gigantino. Iowa State's band ready to march just like their running game. The Cyclones lead Missouri 26 to 14 at the half. And it's been 13 years since a Nebraska-Oklahoma game had national implications. Today, the first game of the century in the new millennium. Folks in Norman thinking orange. Throw the football on third and long. Who came up with run after catch? I did. Thank That's you very right. much. Meanwhile, the goalposts come down and Norman saved the goalposts, say Artie. So the longest winning streak in the nation is over 13 games. But afterwards, Bob Stoops kept everything in perspective. Our players knew, and they understood this, and I told them this on Tuesday. When we win this football game, this isn't the end of the world. This isn't the end of the season. Uh, we still have four more games to play in conference, and then hopefully a championship game, and hopefully a, and then a bowl game from there. So we still have a long road ahead of us. Number two, Virginia Tech in trouble against Pittsburgh, and here's why, Kellen. Take a look at Michael Vick. A lot of pressure from Pitt. He gets wrapped up in the big crowd. His ankle gets twisted under. Frank Beamer concerned. Michael Vick twists this is right ankle. He is listed to be day to day. Late fourth quarter, 20 seconds left. Game tied at 34. Not anymore. Carter Worley delivers from 27 yards out. And Tech escapes by the hair on their chinny chin chin. 37 34. Michael Vick, the early word is that he has a sprained ankle. Meanwhile, number four, Miami and Louisiana Tech. And obviously, the Louisiana Tech coaches did not watch the show last week when I preach don't punt the ball to great punt returners. Why not? Tell, tell me why. People do this. I cannot take it anymore. Why? Why? <laughs> Next week is the showdown between Miami and Virginia Tech. Another top five team in trouble. Number five, Clemson and Georgia Tech, Kellen. With a game on the line, you see the 11 seconds left to go on the clock. A great catch by the receiver in the back of the end zone. Kevin, it's not the throw. It is always the catch that counts. <laughs> it is always the receiver. George Gotti, a big day. 31-28, the final Gotti with four. 154 yards on the day. Meanwhile, six-ranked Florida State rolling against former Seminole assistant Chuck Amato and North Carolina State. 27 nothing to score in that one. And Artie, I just got to give you props. I got to give you a little love because in our pregame show, 
you were with this one all the way. You Golf knew Oklahoma Golf was Golf going Golf. to yeah. beat well, Nebraska. I saw the light on Thursday or Friday. I can't remember. And you were which blinded day. by. And I was blinded by the light. But we talked about it this morning, and I said there were three reasons Oklahoma was going to win: special teams, they block a punt today. Josh Heupel, who was red hot, plus he checks off 75% of the plays at the line of scrimmage, and that shaky Nebraska defense. I want you to start listening to what I say and believe I it. listen to what you say, but I don't believe that you can actually form your mouth to say the things that you do. <laughs> Nebraska lost this game today because they did not get pressure on Josh Heupel. No, it was not the secondary. They played very well. It was a defensive front and the inability to put Josh Heupel on his back. Also, on the offensive side, just very poor play call on offense, Kevin, they're going to have to take uh -huh. a hard look mm -hmm. at their offensive game plan for this right. game and against Oklahoma. Let's not forget, these teams could meet again in the oh, Big absolutely. 12 championship game, so it is still not over. Still ahead, though, highlight from the world's largest outdoor cocktail party as Florida and Georgia mix it up in a game that is a must-win for both teams. New batteries. Autocraft battery cables. AC Delco alternators. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. You know we can give you a free installation if you like. Sure. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. There are lots of ways to equip a car. And right now, when you buy a new 2001 Chevy Cavalier, we'll give you $2,500 cash back. So you can equip your Cavalier any way you like. Bonus. The $2,500 Chevy Cavalier bonus. Hurry, it all ends November 30th. Plus, right now, Chicago area residents make no monthly payments until 2001. Residency restrictions apply. Call for details. There are 800 diamonds like this in Chicago, completely refurbished thanks to a $1 million donation from Chicago White Sox Charities. Better up! So the kids can play. Just a bit of magic, oh, you gotta see it. So like the unexpected, boy, thickly perfected. Ahead of your head, I send. Our stuff is what dreams are made of. Time to bring it on home. Digital palm quarter with three-way PC link from Panasonic. Just slightly ahead of our time. Oh, just a bit of magic. If you're not betting the Breeders' Cup, you'd better have a pretty good reason. The Breeders' Cup Ultra Pick 6. Possibly your best chance to turn two bucks into five million. Okay, honey. Say goodbye. It's almost post time. Go, baby, go. To find out where you can bet the Breeders' Cup Ultra Pick 6, visit BreedersCup.com. Go, baby, go. A new rivalry begins. Jamdov in the Hawks. Piva Krasov in the Wild. Let's get it out. Blackhawks Wild, tomorrow at 6.30. Welcome back to the College Football Saturday Nissan Halftime Report with Kevin Frazier, Kellen Winslow, and Artie Gigantino. Happy times in Ames, Iowa, because Iowa State leads Missouri 26-14 at the half. Let's get to the rest of the scores and highlight the seventh ranked Oregon rallies to beat Arizona State in overtime, double overtime, in the highest scoring game in Division 1A this season. Number eight, Florida in 12. Not only through the air, but on the ground as Gillespie takes it in. Huge win for Steve Spurrier and the Gators. Yeah, the win puts the Gators in the driver's seat in the SEC East. More on why a little bit later. Ninth ranked Washington remains in the Rose Bowl hunt 
as they knock off Stanford 31-28. Another upset, number 10 Kansas State has its 60-game regular season win streak against unranked opponents snapped by Texas A&M. 11th ranked TCO, TCU gets 200 yards from Ladanian Tomlinson and snaps a four-game losing streak to Rice. Kellen, number 12 Ohio State and 16th ranked Purdue. The game on the line, Ohio State with the lead. How does the receiver get that wide open? A blown coverage in the secondary already or just a poor defensive selection by the coaches? Always blaming it on the coaches. <laughs> oh, <laughs> another big win as Purdue knocks off the Buckeyes. Drew Brees throws for 455 yards in this game, and they control their destiny in the Big Ten. And Kellen, another reason that we have to refer back to the pregame show. Why can't you give Purdue any love? I, I just like Ohio State, okay? <laughs> Obviously. My former teammate, Tim Spencer, coaches at Ohio State. They're recruiting my son. It was a personal thing. I'm sorry, Artie. You were right. I, I, want, you I, was I want you to start acting more professional. This is not personal. This is okay. professional. professional. <laughs> Purdue refuses to die. It's a Cinderella team with Drew Brees. This team is never out of the game. They play the Ducks in the Rose Bowl for the last time, I'm telling you. That's yeah. what's going to happen. Ducks seem That's like a team of destiny because of, because yeah, of their win are. today. It was an amazing win for are. Oregon. Well, with Florida taking care of Georgia, could South Carolina follow suit and set up a first place showdown two weeks from now? We'll let you know in a moment. Guess what the interior of the all-new Dodge Caravan is as quiet as? Dodge Grand Caravan, the best minivan ever. Different. Looking for appliances? Then look no further than Sears. Sears is the only place that carries all six top brands. Emphasis on the word only. And hey, if by chance you find a lower price somewhere else, we'll match it, guaranteed. And with over 70 years of experience, why look anywhere else? So the next time you need appliances, come to Sears. The good life at a great price, guaranteed. More to the bus than meets the eye. He's quite the dancer. He bowls a lot. Oh, yeah. It's all in the fingertips. And he has asthma. Having asthma doesn't have to block you from doing anything you love. Are asthma symptoms slowing you down? Call toll-free 1-877-4-ALL-STAR for a free asthma information kit. Blackhawks Wild, tomorrow at 6.30. Seventeenth ranked South Carolina is knocked from the top of the standing in the SEC East by Tennessee. It's the ball's eighth straight win over Carolina. Unbelievable finish between Northwestern and Minnesota, Kellen. The game is tied. Most coaches sit on it, but Randy Walker, the coach of Northwestern, decides, hey, we can win this ball and give it a try. There it is. The Hail Mary is completed. Northwestern, dramatic comeback. An amazing win for Northwestern, 41-35, to 35, your final score. Meanwhile, Artie, let's look ahead to the second half. 26 unanswered points from Iowa State. Yeah, Iowa State's just got to keep running the ball. They've run for 233 yards so far in the first half. Keep running it. Missouri, Darius Outlaw is playing well. Keep making those big plays. They have a chance. All right. After the break, it's back to Ames, where Ron Thule and James Lofton are set to call the second half. Your score at the break, Iowa State 26, Mizzou 14. You've been watching the Nissan Halftime Report. Aaron Armbrecht comes from an unusual family. Aaron, in just a few years, we'll be moving you in. All six went to Iowa State University. Ever think about veterinary school like me? Or how about animal ecology? Maybe restaurant management like Todd. Or child development like me. I think you ought to major in food science like me. Or you can make an awesome quote like this if you major in textiles and clothing like I did. One family, one university. Iowa State University. Strengthening families. Hey, that's my shirt. If you need to set it up, clean it up, 
or tear it down. Get some help. Call Labor Ready at 1-800-24-LABOR. Just a bit of magic. Oh, you gotta see it. So like the unexpected, perfectly perfected, ahead of your head, I said, our stuff is what dreams are made of. Time to bring it on home. Digital palm quarter with three-way PC link from Panasonic. Just slightly ahead of our time. Oh, just a bit of magic. Attention Chicago sports fans. The game room is now Chicago Sports Tonight. Get all the same great Chicago sports coverage, all hosted by Chicago's newest sports team. Watch Chicago Sports Tonight, weeknights on Fox Sports Net. The 2000 Taurus is built to protect you, all of you. Dual stage airbags protect your head and torso. Adjustable pedals mean more space for your legs. But it's Taurus's new styling that protects the most fragile part of the human anatomy, the ego. And while its bold redesign protects your image, 1500 cash back or one nine financing will do wonders for your self-esteem. Ford Taurus, with looks that save face and a deal that saves you cash. Drive one at your local Ford store. Investigated, respected. One Emmy Award winning journalist. Are you drug free now as we sit and talk? Television's first Emmy nominated weekly sports magazine. The perception, Jerry, that there was a cover up. No one else gets to the heart of the important stories. Let's face it, the sport is barbaric. No one else gets you inside the head of today's biggest athletes. And I never told anybody, so I'll tell you. Go and deep. Chris Myers. Sundays at 7 on Fox Sports Net. The Chicago Bulls select Elton Brand from Duke University. Yeah! Rookie with the exclamation point. Can you believe that? How about the room? Face to face. Look at Brand out hustling after. Look at the big fella. Unstoppable. Bulls fans, the shape of things to come. The last time Missouri came back in a game in which they trailed at halftime was 1994. They're one and 29 when trailing at halftime under Larry Smith, along with James Lofton. I'm Ron Thulin, but I think if you're Missouri, you have to make some adjustments defensively. They gave up almost 350 yards offense to Iowa State in that first half. I think for Mo Ankeny, he'll wonder what happened to his ball club. What well, all happened up front? Offensive line did a fantastic job blocking. You can look at the numbers. Look at the rushing yards in this ball game for Iowa State. 233 yards. Those offensive totals look like totals for a ball game. Dennis Haywood having a huge first half. 177 yards rushing the football. We are underway. Quarter number three. Eight yards deep in the end zone, and Iowa State would get it out at the 20 yard line. Eric Clemens, what were the thoughts of Larry Smith and the Missouri Tigers at halftime? Well, the thoughts of Larry Smith about his Missouri Tigers at halftime were simply this We can't teach anymore. We can't tell the guys to go out and tackle on defense, but they're going to have to do it. He believed their offense had some momentum, but the defense really had to step up in the second half and just simply go out, block, tackle, and execute. Otherwise, they were going to go home disappointed again, guys. Especially the lack of success they have had in the second half of ball games this year. But it starts right here defensively for the Missouri Tigers. They have to stop Iowa State right now and get the football back and get back into this game. Rosenfeld swings it out. Pass is complete. Moses looking for running room. Up to the 25 yard line. Pick up a five on the play. Now let's take a look and see what Iowa State did in the first half. After that interception on their opening possession, somewhat successful, not too bad. For the next five times they had the football, they scored. And looked at the length of the scoring drive, 69, 63, 68, 56. They were able to move the ball in big chunks and pick up big yardage and big chunks, of course. Five big plays in that first half, 24, 23, 34, 52. And, of course, NSA was 60-yarder prior to halftime. Haywood again. Up to about the 28-yard line. Closing in on 180 yards rushing the football here in the opening half. Looks like Missouri's made a subtle change defensively. They've gone with a softer, too deep coverage look. What that does is it gives you some outside corner pressure. 
when you're trying to stop the run, but it leaves that middle of the field open for tight ends or even J.J. Moses sneaking down the middle of the field. Well, the numbers on Rosenfels in the first half. Third down and three. He goes from the shotgun. Thanks to Haywood. Swings it out right at the 30-yard line. First down, Moses. David Monroe, the junior out of Miami, Florida, and Pat Duffy on the coverage. Marcus Caldwell thought that he had him. He had him covered. Came up trying to make the tackle. But if you're 5'6", it's easy to slip under someone's grasp. Good play action fake. Then you dump him a quick pass. I'm right there. Oh, no, he's gone. I'll tell you, he's quick. He's not big, but he's fast and he makes up for it. First and 10 for the Cyclones. Picking up where they left off at halftime. Closing in on 400 yards total offense. Rosenfels will run the action. He keeps it up to the 42-yard line. One of the things Missouri just were tinkering, tinkering with and thinking about a couple of weeks ago was moving Justin Smith, the big defensive end, around. They were thinking of moving him to linebacker, moving him farther out. But Mo Ankeny telling us yesterday, we decided just to keep him where he is and let him do his job. Yeah, I don't think he could play any better if you stood him up and made him play linebacker because there's Mo Ankeny. Mo Ankeny said, you know, he rushes the passer well. He plays the run at the point of attack well. We put him at linebacker. Then we have to test his coverage skills and his blitz ability. Mm -hmm. Too many new things to learn during the course of a season. And he didn't have another good defensive lineman to put in either. Just let him use his brute strength. Moses gets a block. Jumps over across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Antoine Duncan went underneath him. Moses went over top of him, and he may be close to the first down. Now, we can talk about a, a man's lack of height, but there's no lack of desire in J.J. Moses. 5'6", 170 pounds. Now, 5'6", isn't big. 170 pounds is not heavy, but when you look at him, there, there is a lot of muscle on that body. You stretch him out and make that a six foot three inch frame, and all of a sudden, you have a 215, 220 pound athlete. So when guys are trying to tackle him, there's still a lot of force in that little body. And it is a first down for the Cyclones. Ball on the 47 yard line. Rosenfels keeps it, has a lot of running room. Takes a dive, takes a hit. Justin Smith coming up, and Antoine Duncan. When you're not going to block somebody, you block the people away from them. So the penetration is coming this way. Justin Smith reacts to the offensive front, but then he gets on his horse. And right here, Sage Rosenfeld has to think, the boundary is my friend. <laughs> That's exactly right. You do not want to take that hit from guys that big too often. It's great to pick up the first down to be a hero, but you also have to realize, okay, the scoreboard, 26-14, that's a first down play. If I pick up nine, that's great. Mm -hmm. If I pick up 10 and I separate a shoulder, that's not good at all. Ask Kirk Farmer about that. With what he did versus Nebraska a few weeks ago. Justin Smith, the man they call Godzilla. He is a guy that's been double teamed, triple teamed. Teams run away from him all year and he still makes plays. Still their leading tackler. That was a first down, first and 10. They are in Missouri territory. Ball at the 43 yard line. Haywood, not much running room this time. Good pursuit by the Missouri defense, led by Pat Duffy. Next week, starts your college football Saturday with the pregame show presented by Rivals.com at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. Then it's triple header action, starting with Tennessee versus Memphis. Then Louisville takes on number 14, Southern Missy, Mississippi. We'll follow it up with number 22, Texas, taking on the Red Raiders of Texas Tech. It's all right here on Fox Sports Net next week. James, Eric, and I and our entire crew will be in Lubbock, Texas next week for that Texas shootout. That will be a good one. Rosenfels passes complete. Penalty flag is thrown. Greg Campbell on the reception. Terry Turlington says, nope, we're coming back with that one. Now the South standings, Oklahoma obviously on top, yet to lose a conference game, yet to lose overall, but Texas and Texas A&M right behind with one loss. Of course, Texas, Texas Tech next week, and then Oklahoma and A&M. That'll be on November 11th in College Station. But don't count out Texas Tech. They become bowl eligible today with a win over Terry Allen's Kansas Jayhawks. Look at that six and three record. That's a really nice record for first year coach Mike Leach down mm -hmm. there. He's instilled that, I guess it's run and shoot offense kind of, or the air raid, raid offense. Run and shoot with Mouse Davis. There you go. Warren Moon. 
And I think Texas Tech will remember the thrashing they took to Texas last year by the Longhorns up in Austin. But two years ago, Texas Tech upset Texas in Lubbock. Second down and 22. Five-man rush by Missouri. Rosenfeld swings it out. A little too high. Intended for J.J. Moses. When you run a corner route, which is what J.J. Moses is doing from the inside, the outside receiver must clear out that outside area. You're going to see the outside receiver come into the pitcher at the tail end of the play. See, he's looking back. You must run that defensive back. Continue to run him up the field so that you protect little J.J. Moses and you don't send him to the uh, bench not feeling well. I think he was talking to Anthony about it and the rest of the receiving corps. How about him <laughs> standing next to Mike Banks, who's 6'4". Third down, we call it 21. You can see what they've done. Good job on third down conversions for the Cyclones. The draw. This time the Tiger defense is there to wrap up Haywood. Good first defensive stop by Missouri. Obviously aided by the penalty. You won't pick up very many first downs when you have major penalties during the course of a drive, but also a good job by Missouri in staying at home against the run, not getting fooled too often in that drive. And the Cyclones will be forced to kick it away. Eric Spencer standing on his 10-yard line. High spiraling kick. It'll be short. Spencer at the 15. Looking for the wall, can't find it. He is going to be chased out of bounds and hit out of bounds, and the hey, penalty yeah. flag will be thrown. Rutland got him a little bit too late. Put at 34 yards, the return of six, but they'll get a couple more because of the penalty. Now, Dan McCartney telling Eric Clemens at halftime, a little sloppy. We've got a couple flags down. We even have one back at the 40 now. We look down at the field. And Dan's saying, wait a minute, which one's against us? What's the call? Well, the 15 yard is going to be a dead ball foul, so that'll be assessed right. after the play is over. You have an initial foul against Missouri during the kick, or after the kick, then you assess that, and then you tack on the penalty going the opposite way. So it could end up just being a five yard penalty in favor of Missouri if there's a 10 yarder going against them. Now, Reggie Hayward is standing right by. Looks like roughing the kicker and a late hit. So they're going to sort it out, make sure everything's correct. Let's listen in, and Terry's going to explain it. Well, we got a hold. Well, that's interesting. And no late hit? No late hit. I mean, that flag was thrown yeah. after the play was over. That is. Well, the flag came in and looked like after contact on the kicker. Right? There. He gets blocked into the yeah. kicker there, which I understand. Okay, but the flag came in right there at the 40. There it comes. Now they're saying there's only one penalty on the play. And then the flag came in on this hit very late. Now watch this. One, two, three steps out of bounds, and then he's tackled. And they're saying it's a holding penalty. Dead ball. Personal foul. Oh, it is. There it is. On the offense. 15-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. You see, that's a, a dead ball foul. Right. Well, they have a hold against Missouri. Then the personal foul. So you got the hold, which was a 10-yard penalty. Yeah. And then you got a 15-yard penalty. So I told you it would be five yards in favor of Missouri. I just didn't know that it would be a repunning. Yeah. Well, Eric Spencer now will stand on his 15-yard line. Larry Smith thinks he has it figured out. No, I don't think he has it figured out. He's just glad to run <laughs> in the next play. No one has this one figured out. No. Gilpin standing at his 32-yard line. Or is it Gomez? High snap. This time a low kick. Spencer better get away from it. He finally does. Gets a great Iowa State roll. And it will be down at the 12-yard line. 44-yard kick. It wasn't pretty, but it got the job done. Not pretty. You know, one of the reasons why you like to have two men back, because you can get to these short punts, 
This time, Eric Spencer doesn't have a chance to get to it, but he's got to yell poison, poison, or whatever their call is to get his guys who are blocking the gunners yeah. away from the football. One of those guys runs into the ball, nicks it a little bit. That's going to be a ball for Iowa State going the opposite direction. Well, we said that Missouri must score touchdowns, can't get field goals. They had a nice drive as the second quarter was coming to a close. Let's see if they can pick it up with the running game again. Gilmore, Jane Gilmore on the carry. Well, Missouri, their first half possessions, they had a touchdown after the punt, but then they couldn't hit Pater. They missed a field goal. They had one blocked, and they finally scored on a 75-yard drive in 10 plays to close out quarter number two. Crazy thing about that blocked field goal attempt, Holder, Jared Gilpin picks it up, and they almost get a first down out of that play. Second down and eight, Outlaw. He's throwing it deep, has a man incomplete. It's hard to throw a deep pass as you're running forward. You're not gonna get any air into the ball. That's a very flat pass. The trajectory on it gives the receiver no chance to catch the ball. There you see his first half numbers, eight out of 18, 109 yards. But what it doesn't show there with that one interception is how well he moved around the pocket. And he really rushed the ball extremely well in the first half and showed good pocket presence. Now Justin Gage wide to the right. They go with the five receiver set again. On third and eight. Pass complete at the 22-yard line. Push back to the 20. Let's see where they mark it. Justin Gage using every bit of that 6-5 frame to come up with his fourth reception of the evening. Looks like he'll be a little bit short. That'll depend on where the officials decide to spot the football. He caught it just about at the first down marker. And we'll take a look at it again. Mm -mm -mm. Now, an inch short. Now, now, we talked about this earlier. They don't huddle up. They're running plays in from the sideline. What you'd like to do here is delay getting your guys on the field. Now, what's going to happen is this Iowa State crowd is going to get loud. Yep. And so on third and short, when timing coming off the ball quickly is important, this is when the crowd can get in the ball game and affect the other team's offense. Well, you can see our Verizon first and 10 marker and see where they need to get it to. The quarterback snake. Outlaw keeps it himself, and it should be a first down. Safe play. Don't take a chance. That's the only play they had. They had no lead blocker in on that play, so you don't want to turn and give it to someone. Because when you give it to your quarterback, the linebacker is expecting the running back to carry the ball. So the quarterback can hit that seam right behind the center one way or the other and pick up that easy first down. Hopping over, tackles Zach Avery with some running room. Up to midfield and knocked out of bounds at the Iowa State 48-yard line by Kevin Durandi, the junior out of Pella, Iowa. Now, I don't know who to give the better hustle play on this. Great run by Zach Haven. And we talked, you know, we've joked about his short leg, but this is a great run. Hopping over guys, breaking tackles, and then switching the ball to the proper arm. But Kevin Durandi, number 99, chasing down the play. Excellent, because he is coming from the opposite side, and he doesn't yeah. stop. A lot of times you get a big lead, you wait for other people to make the play. Excellent job by Durandi, number 99. Well, he was part of his high school 4x200 relay team, so he does have a little speed. Straight ahead, running by the Tigers. Another first down, down to the 28-yard line. Zane Gilmore. Joe Chirambello, we saw him go out of the ball game earlier. He is the fullback. Check him out as he goes right there, and boom. Takes his legs out from under. It's really hard to cut someone in the hole because you take up the hole. That time, the offensive line had such a big hole, Chirambello could take a cut block, and you're running back. Gilmore still has room to run behind him. The last two games, they've only scored three points in the second half. Trying to remedy that problem. Gilmore tries the left side, picks up about three on the play, maybe four. You've run the ball well. You have the defensive unit, John Skodany, his guys up along the line of scrimmage. Now you look for your mismatch. Justin Gage, six feet, five inches tall. The tallest cornerback for Iowa State is 5'8". Now, I'm not real good at math, but I think that's nine inches. Next, 
mismatch that you want. And Outlaw is pummeled at the 27-yard line, a loss of one or Edgy Hayward. The senior out of Dalton, Illinois, just outside of Chicago on the stop. Reggie Hayward, we talked about him being stronger at the point of attack. Well, if you don't block him at the point of attack, he is going to mess your quarterback up. He does a nice job of containing that. And his job on that semi-option is the quarterback. He does his job. Third down and five. Outlaw looking, looking, throwing, picked up. His second interception of the evening. This one goes for the touchdown. Mark Simmons, a red shirt freshman, five feet nine inches out of Bradenton, Florida. Coach McCarney is really stressing to us about getting those guys from Florida, getting those guys from Texas, guys with a little bit of speed. You saw the speed on that play. The high snap, but the kick is good. Timmons has two picks tonight. This one goes for the touchdown. The inexperience of Darius Outlaw shows on that play. Iowa State with a lead by 19. You're about to see something special. The 2001 Buick Century Special Edition. Luxury, quality, a little buzz you get from driving it. The 2001 Century Special Edition is all that and less. $1,250 less right now. Century has been a Consumer's Digest Best Buy for four straight years. Come see something special. Check out the 2001 Century Special Edition or get 0.0% financing on all remaining new 2000 Centuries. Come see your Buick dealer today. Dr. Pepper, you make the world taste better, yeah. You make the world go around and around. You pick it up, you can't put it down. Here at VMI, we were asked to try the Norelco Advantage for 21 days. There was quiet dissension. I'm not giving out my blade. And anxious inquiry. What the heck is this? Goo? But then we started to realize the lotion actually gave us a closer, smoother shave than we expected. Without the nicks and cuts of blades. Our fear diminished. Our hopes arose. And life got a little less hairy. Come on, baby face, move it! The Norelco Advantage. It's guaranteed or your money back. Norelco. Put it to the test. Fox Sports Net is brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Isn't it time for a real car? Along with Eric Clemens and James Lofton, I'm Ron Thulin, welcoming you back to Ames, Iowa, where the Iowa State Cyclones and the Missouri Tigers hooking it up in Big 12 football. 629 left in the third in Iowa State, courtesy of a 78-yard interception return by Mark Timmons. Taking the lead at 33-14. Inside of five, Marcus James looking for some running room. Crosses the 30 up to the 31-yard line. And we'll take a timeout. Iowa State with a 19-point advantage. When I think of NCAA football, I have memories of magical moments. I think of the great rivalries. I think of working together as a team. I think of our incredible marching bands. I think of our fantastic fans.
33 to 14 is our score. Iowa State leading the Missouri Tigers as the Iowa State Cyclones looking to assure their first winning season from since 1989 and qualify for a bowl, something they haven't done since the Hall of Fame Bowl in 1978 where they lost to Texas A&M. First and 10 for the Tigers. Gilmore right side. And he is wrapped up by Kevin Durandi. But let's go back to that interception by Timmons, his second of the night. And you can trace almost every interception to pressure. You get quick pressure on the right side, breaking him down right there. And when he steps up in the pocket, then the backside pressure gets him. And talked about this earlier, the one thing you don't do, throw the ball late down the middle. And he pays forward, pays forward with seven points in the opposite direction. Learning experiences. That's the second time he's done that tonight. Rifles the pass, tipped incomplete. Intended for Justin Gage. Well, one of the problems Missouri has had to deal with this whole season, turnovers. Larry Smith's team is not used to that. And you can see what they've done as far as the turnovers. 20 turnovers have accounted for 78 opponent points this year. They've had the two tonight. They're number 78 in the NCAA in turnovers. And that is not good, but part of it because of the inexperience, because of the injuries. Third down and seven for the Tigers. Outlaw scrambling again. Has the running room. Has the first down and steps out of bounds. Outlaw scrambles for the Missouri first and ten. Nice job by Justin Ellers, number 48, at the tail end of the play. Quarterback is going out of bounds. He stepped on the boundary. Granted, he doesn't run way deep on the sideline. Don't take that hit. Don't cost your team 15 yards. Larry Smith's team, we've had some problems this year. The rumors and innuendos flying around about his future, but he has been very professional. And one thing you can say about his teams, they never quit. They have played hard every game this year. Hand off over the left side on first down. Zach Abram, the ball carrier, maybe picking up two on the play. Well, I'm sure Dan McCartney's enjoying it, but his wife Margie probably is biting her fingernails. She's the first game she's missed this year at Iowa State. And Dan said she's at a wedding, I think in New York City. And Margie, he's thinking about you. But I'm sure you're resting a little bit easier now with the 33 to 14 lead. Closing in on five minutes to play in the third. A little play action pass. Outlaws pass. Look out! It's caught. Well, How about a little okay, Jack Tatum, but it wasn't Franco Harris coming down with it. See, it Gilmore does a nice job. One of the things that you try and coach guys on is to react to the thrown ball. That time that ball's batted up in the air. And Zane Gilmore, you see him turn, corner your screen, and he follows the ball and follows the play because what he's trying to do is get in position to where he could have blocked if the receiver caught the pass. Luckily, he caught that ball. Now you have a third and five, a makeable situation. Mm -hmm. Mark Timmons almost had his third interception tonight. Outlaw again scrambling. They try to get him from behind, and he is close to the first down as he crosses the 50. Maybe about a foot short of our Verizon first and 10 line. Outlaw does have some skills. There's no question about it. I think what he's missing is just the experience. In addition to that, we talked about the depleted receiving core. So you, you have guys who were playing on defense before. Justin Gage, who's now the leading receiver on the team, who was the third team quarterback when this season started. Played quarterback last year for the ball club. Now he's playing wide receiver and has made a very effective transition to that position. On fourth down. They're two for two on fourth down tonight. Outlaw pitching. Gilmore. He's got the first down. Three for three on first down conversion or fourth down conversions tonight for the Missouri Tigers. But it starts up front. Check the offensive line out. They get off the ball well. There's a little penetration. And Outlaw does a nice job in holding that ball until the last possible minute. And Zane Gilmore, good job in realizing, okay, this is fourth and one. I'm not going to stretch this all the way to the boundary. Cuts up. He gets those shoulder square, and he picks up the first down. On first and ten, Outlaw looking to throw it again. Thrown behind the intended receiver. In fact, somebody Spencer. might have gotten a hand no, on I that ball. Right. I thought Derek Walker, number four, might have reached up and got a, a hand on that, just deflected it just a little bit. 
Well, Bill Cubit wanted to really control the pace <laughs> of the game tonight. And I think when they run the football, they've been able to do that. They saw Bill Cubit sending in the play kind of demonstratively. And they're all on his wristband, so he could hold up three fingers, but he kind of shot three fingers out to him. Outlaw swings it out. That was a dangerous pass. Austin was standing right there. And it's been a tough year for Bill Cubitt. His son is a very highly recruited high school player, and he just blew out his meniscus uh, about a week ago. Watch this ball straight down the line of scrimmage, and you're getting the defensive backs creeping Gee. up. They've seen this look a couple of times. The next look is to fake that pump out there and hit the wide receiver who was supposed to block sailing right past those cornerbacks. Well, Justin Gage is out there to block, and you can see what Missouri has done. They face third and 10 from the 48. Outlaw going for everything. Pass caught at the two-yard line drop. No incomplete. Tay Jackson, the freshman from Florida, had it, couldn't put the meat hooks on it completely. Great effort by Tay Jackson. Nice throw by Darius Outlaw. You see Bill Cubitt saying, maybe your release point wasn't great. There's a hand by the defensive back. Just a little bit of a hand. Has that ball, mm. and then it just slips out before it hits the ground. You have to look the point of the ball, and you still see the receiver's eyes are kind of up in parallel instead of going down with the football. And it'll be fourth down for the Tigers. Kicking with the win, a high spiraling kick. Oh my! Check your dentures, Mr. Moses, and that's the halo rule. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Unless he signaled fair catch, that was not the halo rule. The halo rule is two yards. It doesn't matter how hard you hit him after that. It was not a two-yard infraction when he caught that ball. There was plenty of room for J.J. Moses to make that catch. Now, if he signaled fair catch, that's another story. Tay Jackson is down. I think he may have fallen on the no, he, he dropped it. That's the pain yeah. you feel when you drop the deep pass. Well, he's having trouble catching his breath. The trainer's coming over to take a look at him. Five yards, family. First down. Well, J.J. took a shot on that. I, I don't agree with this call at all. you got to show me this one one more time. And if they're within two yards when this ball is caught, I'm going to give Ron Thulin a pat on the back. <laughs> you still let that now they're going to call a timeout with 302 to play in quarter number three iowa state with the football and the lead we'll be back you're about to see something special introducing the 2001 buick lesaver special edition it's all about safety and comfort and that devilish grin you get knowing you just got the better end of the deal like a $1,250 value on the 2001 Buick LeSabre Special Edition. You can get real comfortable with that. Come see something special. Come see your Buick dealer today. Just a bit of magic. Oh, you gotta see it. So like the unexpected. Perfectly perfected. Digital palm quarter with three-way PC link from Panasonic. Oh, just a bit of magic. Craving more taste? More variety? All you need is 99 cents. Check out the new 99 cent BK Cravers menu with eight items including our Bullseye Barbecue Deluxe, Chicken Tender Sandwich, and Tasty Mozzarella Sticks. Just 99 cents every day. More coverage, more analysis, plus live interaction where you get to sound off. How did this show get out of control? The National Sports Report at 10 and midnight. I open my car, open the sunroof, play CDs and rock it to Rusty's for Byzantine cuisine. Presto, I am happy as a tattoo on a supermodel. This is the Wild Neon Life. Now get cash allowance or low financing on Dodge Neon. Here, check this out. Two yards isn't always two yards. You have to be able to do the math. And believe me, I did a little math when I was in college. Now, you get two yards going up this way, but then you take that angle, take two squared times A squared, B squared. <laughs> that's 2.1 yards right there. No flag. 
Now Michael Harden came down to make the vicious hit on J.J. Moses. Back to live action. Iowa State straight ahead running by Haywood. Haywood with 182 yards running the football on 18 carries prior to that one. And he's going to add to the 268 plus rushing yards that Iowa State's already tacked on the board. And they're closing in on 400 yards total offense tonight. Three of the last four teams that Missouri has faced have gone over the 450 mark. Only Oklahoma State under that at 359. So their defense has allowed some big yardage. Haywood just ducks his head. Haywood, the ball carrier for the cycle on the first down. Will Iowa State go to their first bowl game in 22 years? That could be decided tonight. Welcome to Jack Trice Stadium in Ames, Iowa, along with James and Eric. I'm Ron Thulin as the Iowa State Cyclones looking for their sixth one of the year against two losses. And we are so exciting tonight as announcers that we've put him to sleep. You no, know, that kid's just saying I'd much rather be at home listening to these guys than actually be at the game. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Iowa State now at 400 total yards off this. Michael Wagner, a very talented redshirt freshman who was slated to play last year, dislocated a elbow early on, took a medical redshirt out of a very good high school in California, Bishop Amat High School. The tough thing for Iowa State right now is you're looking at the clock, 17 minutes to play. Continue to run our regular offense. They're right. going to crowd people up along that defensive front, which they've done all night long. We pop creases. That's where we've gotten our big plays but they're also loading up on your running backs. Second and 10, Rosenfeld looking for somebody. Throws it behind his intended receiver, tight end Mike Banks, or the Manimal, as they call him. He had Banks early. He waited, kind of waiting to suck the defense in. Get him that ball early. Let him turn up the field. Got him all the way to the boundary after he had crossed the field. Banks is thinking he's not going to throw it to him. He is a Manimal. Look at the size of that young man. And of course, the coach is telling us yesterday he's one of the best players on the team. Third down and 10 for the Cyclones. Knock goes in motion. Look out. Rosenfels, he is going to be sacked for only the fourth time this year. Justin Smith is now just one sack away from setting the Missouri career sack record, now held by Rick Lyle. Nice job by Justin Smith. He beats Marcel Howard. He's going to go up and then under. Check that move out. Marcel Howard is just thinking, hey, aren't we supposed to roll out on this player or something? <laughs> hey, you guys, you guys left me here all by myself. Made me look bad. And let's mention only the fourth sack on Sage Rosenfeld. That guy's getting no hamburger and shake from Sage after the season. That was, that was a Marcel Marceau block, I think. We've got the kicker down. We have a penalty flag. Marcus James trying to go somewhere. He goes there quickly. But the punter, Gomez, is down. 41 yards on the kick, lost two on the return. They're going to have to take a look at him. And you realize what a defenseless position punters mm -hmm. are in. And, you know, we always hear about guys acting. This is no acting right here. Number seven, Antoine Duncan, comes in. Supposed to get a block point, which is about 11 yards from where that punter is off the line of scrimmage. The punters line up at 15. They're going to step up four yards. You want to be in front of that 11 yards. That's your block point. You don't go directly at the punter. Roughing the kicker on the defense. That's an automatic first down. Now that's the big penalty. Gomez is going to get up. He had a chance to spend some time with this young man on Thursday. He's an exceptional young man, but he takes a shot. Got him right in that left knee, his kicking leg. Gomez, you can see on his right knee, he is already wearing a kicking brace. It spins him around. Terry Turlington was quick to throw the flag, and Iowa State retains possession of the football. And they move it up to the 30-yard line. First and 10, final 40 seconds of quarter number three. Rosenfeld's looking over the middle, has a man, and is complete to Anthony. Clarence Jones, the junior out of St. Louis, Missouri, on the coverage. And another first down for the Cyclones, pickup of 18 on the play.
Mixing up the run and the pass, keeping a pretty balanced offense. Loney doing a nice job plate calling tonight. Taking over for Pete Hayner, who went down to AM. Loney kept pretty much the same basic offensive scheme, has added a few wrinkles to the Cyclones. Keeping it on the ground with Wagner. And we have another penalty flag throw. We've got a couple to choose from. You know, we talk a lot about bowl eligible. That doesn't necessarily mean that Iowa State's going to a bowl. And I think Iowa State realizes they can celebrate tonight, but they still have some work to be done that we're sure they'll be going to a postseason game. Personal foul on the defense, 15 yard penalty. The quarter has ended. Now the third quarter comes to an end with a personal foul penalty against the Missouri Tigers. And with 15 minutes to play, Iowa State with a 33 14 lead and a winning season on the line. You're about to see something special. The 2001 Buick Century Special Edition. Luxury, quality, a little buzz you get from driving it. The 2001 Century Special Edition is all that and less. $1,250 less right now. Century has been a Consumer's Digest Best Buy for four straight years. Come see something special. Check out the 2001 Century Special Edition or get 0.0% financing on all remaining new 2000 Centuries. Come see your Buick dealer today. renting again and enterprise picked her up again she said enterprise picks her up free 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 now that makes renting easy mm -hmm. pick enterprise we'll pick you up just try to relax you're about to witness digital camera history heart stopping isn't it the power shot digital elf from canon are you digital yet Larry Smith said he's had tougher years than this one. The injuries have piled up, and as he heads to the final quarter against Iowa State, his troops trail 33-14. You can see the numbers, 409 yards for Iowa State on offense, and they're moving the football again. Straight ahead to Haywood. But I think what's ironic about all this, Iowa State has only had eight third-down chances tonight. And the majority of their yards have come on first down. Yeah, but look at Haywood when he runs to his left and to his right. That's when he gets the big chunk of chains. Five for 92 on the left, seven for 29 in the middle, eight for 74. That's a little bit deceiving because sometimes he'll start right and then go left, start this way, go that way. So he's run all over the place <laughs> and done a good job <laughs> everywhere he's gone. You like that, didn't you? <laughs> Second down and eight from the 33. Rosenfeld's pass complete to Chris Campbell. And he is close to the 20-yard line, and that'll be another Iowa State first down. Pickup of 12 on the play. They really have gotten into a rhythm, and they have not allowed Missouri to control the pace of the game. And what you want to continue to do at this point of the ball game, you want to continue to put that polish on your offense. You don't want to slough off. Offensive linemen continue to come off the ball. You run crisp routes on the outside, and you make the correct read. You just don't make a greedy read when you're throwing the football. You make the correct read. You see 10 out of 16. That's good passing when you don't have to. Now they go to a two tight end formation. Haywood sees the seam, runs through the seam inside the 20 yard line. And this is an area where Iowa State over the last four years really has shown improvement. Just from last year, they were just at 34% of the red zone. 
This year, they're at 84 percent in the red zone. So Dan McCartney has taken the last few years, and what he's done is build up the offensive linemen. He's gotten players he needs, and it's really turned out to be successful for him as far as red zone is concerned. Second down and six from the 17. before he picks up another 12 yards. There are running backs in college football that leads the Big 12 in rushing. And is number 11 in the NCAA. He is built solidly at 5'11", 206. He's gone to kind of a half flak jacket in this ball game. You can see part of the pad sticking out because he took some shots in the Nebraska game, wasn't able to run the ball successfully, struggled versus A&M, so he said, I had to put this on because I've taken some hits back there. And you know what? You need to wear those during practice, even when you don't have full contact, so you get used to holding the ball close to your body because that plastic, sometimes the ball will bounce off of when you get hit hard. Second and goal from the four. Rosenfels has a group in front of him. Not going to happen, though. Nope. <laughs> that closed quickly. Led by Danny McCain, the senior out of St. Joseph, Missouri, and also Pat Mangucci. Now, sometimes offensive coordinators are, are great copycats, and Steve Looney probably saw Eric Crouch from Nebraska run that play. Well, Eric Crouch cannot throw the ball like That's Sage right. Rosenfeld, and I'd suggest that Sage does not run the ball as well as Eric Crouch. I'd have to say so. There's Steve Looney, the offensive coordinator. I think he crossed that one off his list for future references. I think he just put the pencil through that. <laughs> this is the 15th play of the drive. They've had the ball almost six minutes here on this drive. Third and goal from the five. Three yeah. wide receivers right. And they're trying to spread them out, but Missouri's not buying it. Rosenfels, quarterback draw, reaches forward, touchdown. The benefits of being six, four and a half. He used every inch of his body. They tried to spread him out with a four wide receiver look. You had three to the left. You could smell the quarterback draw coming because you cannot account for the quarterback as a rusher. If your center gets off the ball, he's going to pick up a linebacker. But Sage does a nice job in kind of bobbing and weaving his way through traffic and then stretching out that big frame and getting into the end zone. And they're going to go for two, leading 39 to 14 with still a lot of time left. So Dan McCartney is not putting this one in the books yet. Rosenfels, his second rushing touchdown tonight. They go for two. Looks right, goes left, has a man trying to get into the end zone. Joe Woodley, the redshirt freshman fullback out of West Des Moines, cannot find Pater. But Rosenfels with his fifth rushing touchdown of the year. He used every bit of his body, and Iowa State leads by 25. Coming up next, the Dr. Pepper Halftime Show. There are lots of ways to equip a car. And right now, when you buy a new 2001 Chevy Cavalier, we'll give you $2,500 cash back. So you can equip your Cavalier any way you like. Bonus. The $2,500 Chevy Cavalier bonus. Hurry, it all ends November 30th. Plus, right now, Chicago area residents make no monthly payments until 2001. Residency restrictions apply. Call for details. Just a bit of magic. Oh, you gotta see it. So like the unexpected. Boy, thickly perfected. Ahead of your head, I said. Our stuff is what dreams are made of. Time to bring it on. Home. Digital palm quarter with three-way PC link from Panasonic. Just slightly ahead of our time. Oh, just a bit of magic. Sage Rosenfels. 
Iowa. Iowa. He led the 16th play, 87-yard drive, took over six and a half minutes. And McKnight will kick off again for Iowa State with the win, and he moved this one. Nobody is going anywhere. And Ricardo Rhodes will take a seat. Missouri first and 10, their own 20-yard line. Verizon presents first and 10 all season long on Fox Sports Net College Football Saturday. Verizon making the world of communications a whole lot simpler. I tell you, the temperature has gone down, and that young man, I think, could be young lady, has the right idea. Oh, I think that looks like you up here. <laughs> you got <laughs> that, the bundle. That's the way I You're feel. a California guy. You're dying up here. First and 10 for the Green Bay. Yeah, there you go. Outlaw tucks it, keeps it. Reaches forward to the 30-yard line. He had over 70 yards rushing prior to that. Gary? Tomorrow we're bringing the tailgate party to you with the NFL This Morning on Fox Sports. That the most raucous and rocking Sunday morning pregame show anywhere. Now a full two hours of morning madness to get you ready for kickoff. Chris Myers leads this NFL morning breakfast bunch for Chalk Talk, Trash Talk, and Bagels. And Jay Moore will also be there. That's tomorrow, 10 a.m. Pass is complete pass up to the 38-yard line. Eric Spencer on the reception. Now Missouri is not rolling over and playing dead. I think it's an excellent learning opportunity for Darius Outlaw. His, his ball club is obviously behind in this game, but he, he's continuing to function well in this kind of limited no huddle offense, getting the ball down the field, running well, and putting the ball in the money for the most part in his throws. Just don't make those critical turnovers trying to force the ball late down the middle. Outlaw calling his own number again, takes a slide as he crosses the 45-yard line. Preparing for Missouri this year has been extremely difficult. Bill Cubitt has put together a great offensive plan, but Iowa State's John Skuldaney, he had to really prepare two books for this game. He said he wanted to prepare for Bill Cubitt's smash mouth football and also for his four and five wide receiver football. And he said he had a reel of plays with kind of the gimmick plays and then those uh, duck plays. And I'll explain that after the uh, play here. Abram, close to the 50 yard line. Mark Timmons coming up to make the stop. Okay, what's a duck play? Now, I've heard a lot of terminology in football. And a duck play is a spread play, I and mean, that's where you get spread your wings, but essentially you'd have four wide receivers or you'd have a crazy formation where the offensive lineman would be out here and some out there, and everything is spread out, and that's a, a duck play. The pitch, Gilmore crossing the 45 down to the 43-yard line. Before Matt Ward comes up to make the stop, Nigel Tharp also in on the tackle, but we have some pads popping on that play. Whenever you get contact like this, you know that the effort level is there for both teams. You know, we're seeing that great hustling defensive line of Iowa State. This could be their best defensive line since the mid-80s. I don't think there's any question about that. And, and they've got a nickname, and you know when you have a nickname, you're feeling kind of confident about yourself. During the offseason, they dubbed themselves the Red Storm. Fitting. Pass is complete. Spencer spins away. Tiptoes out of bounds at the 29-yard line. Adam Runk coming up to make the stop. The junior out of Stillwater, Minnesota. So Outlaw showing moments of poise and experience. And these guys are uh, guys like Spencer and Zach Abron and Gilmore are getting some valuable quality time in this ball game. They're getting touches, they're getting their hands on the ball. The guy like Spencer is showing that he can do something after the catch. Hey, they've got 374 yards offense with 21 first downs already tonight. That's not too shabby. Outlaw going for Pater, looking for Spencer. has got him, touchdown! 29-yard touchdown reception by Eric Spencer, his third of the year. Spencer does a nice job because this is not your classic deep pass. It's thrown a little soft, a little late, and he does a nice job. See the stop and go move, and you get no help from the inside because that guy bit up early, and Spencer does a nice job in just not putting his hands up too early, not panicking, not overreacting. Spencer was a high school quarterback. Granted, he's been playing receiver for a couple years, but he's been down the depth chart. He did catch 23 passes, uh, 28 passes in 99, but that's not a lot of passes in college football today. 
you look at a, right. a heavy workload of 70, 80 receptions. Spencer is the type of guy, and look at his running ability that you can use. He can run those screens, he can run outs, and we see he has the ability to get deep. Spencer's caught at least two passes in every game this year. Missouri going for two. Spencer in motion. They run the option. Outlaw not going to get it. Reggie Hayward coming up to make the stop. It was 9.41 to play in a ball game. Missouri hanging in there. They trail by just 19. New batteries. Liquid wrench. Autocraft battery cables. AC Delco alternators. Advanced Auto Parts carries more parts than any other store, including one you won't find anywhere else. You know, we can give you a free installation if you like. Sure. Advanced Auto Parts. The best part is our people. The Chicago Bulls select Elton Brand from Duke University. Yeah! Rookie with the Award-winning journalist. Are you drug-free now as we sit and talk? Television's first Emmy-nominated weekly sports magazine. The perception, Jerry, that there was a cover-up. No one else gets to the heart of the important stories. Let's face it, the sport is barbaric. No one else gets you inside the head of today's biggest athletes. I never told anybody, so I'll tell you. Going deep. Chris Myers. Sundays at 7 on Fox Sports Net. Blackhawks Wild, tomorrow at 6.30. One more game on the way on the net, and it's a good one. Once things are done in Ames, it's off to our Pac-10 nightcap. Number 17, Oregon State and Washington State. Kickoff is set for 10-15, and Ron and James, as you guys know all so well, the nightcap is usually a wild one, especially when it's out of the Pac-10, guys. Absolutely, and I've got a Pac-10 guy here, Kevin, that just actually goes back to his room and diligently watches that Pac-10 game. Now, you've never been to Corvallis, Oregon, or have you? No, I have never been there. Not a bad trip there. That'll be coming up. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, Lewis Johnson standing by. J.J. Moses, look out! To the 30. Still on his feet. Up to the 45-yard line. J.J. Moses, who's already had an exceptional evening. And Eric Clemens, there's a lot to summarize tonight when you talk about this football game. Well, for once, hey, the guys we talk about in the open, Ennis Haywood being one of them, producing points and numbers for Dan McCarney. Look at Haywood, 23 carries, 214 yards. Outlaw has not been bad, made a couple of young mistakes. And look at the total offense. Uh, what's that addition there, Lofton? 847? That's, uh, that's a lot. 847. <laughs> you, you could yeah. balance the bumper budget with those numbers. <laughs> that or, is or the bumble. <laughs> Eric Kangana, I want to ask you a question after this play. Straight ahead running. A try to the right side by Michael Wagner. Eric, you're on that Missouri sideline. Have you sensed any lack of enthusiasm by this team, even though they're down by 19? Absolutely not. I, I sense, and I've sensed since we've covered these guys a couple of times this year, that they keep looking for the snakes. They seem to just get bitten every time. If it's not an injury, it's a bad break, like the interception return for the touchdown or something. But these guys have continued to battle. They proved that the last time they had the football. They're continuing to battle on, in all aspects, and I think it says something for Larry Smith and his coaching staff that these guys who could have given up long ago with all the injuries they suffered has not. All right, Eric, we'll let you go because Mike Banks is down. They're looking at his right knee. Dan McCartney has come out. You can see the scoring by quarters. Deliver the financial products and services to get you there. Wells Fargo the next day. Dan McCartney is going to uh, make sure that the big tight end out of Ogden, Iowa is all right. You know, uh, some head coaches, they just stand on the sideline. They don't come out. And you get the sense from Dan McCartney when yeah. you're around him. Sure, he's the head coach. 
but he's also one of the guys. Mm -hmm. And when one of your guys goes down, you want to go out there and, and check him out, yep. make sure he's okay and see how he is. You know, there are a lot of little injuries during the course of a ball game, but it speaks volumes about a coach and about his compassion for his players. When he's out there, he's on a knee, hold, holding that guy's hand as he's suffering on the field. Second down and five for the Cyclones. Inside of nine minutes to play. Pads popping, not much running room. You bring up a great point about Dan McCartney. Wagner stopped on the carry. Is that one thing when he took over when we first met him a few years ago, he said he had to build trust not only in each other, but in the program itself. And that's one thing he's been able to do. And in fact, he set an attitude with his coaches. His coaches have to wear ties in every day. On the road and on home games, the kids wear ties. We go to interview them, they have ties on. He has I built the program. Yeah, I did too. He built the program <laughs> you, with a lot of integrity. You were looking good. I had on sneakers. <laughs> he looked at you. <laughs> he offered me a tie. Two wide receivers to the right. Roosevelt, great fake. Crosses the 50 down to the 42-yard line before McCamey knocks him down. And because of that trust, the offense has improved under Steve Loney and Pete Hainer when he was here. How about that? That's called steady improvement, wouldn't you say? And that translates into points, which translates into wins, which translates into recruiting. Absolutely. So when he came here, they had... 67 players on the roster. Now they have 138. They're getting walk-ons. Yep. They're getting the in-state guys. I mentioned they're getting the California, the Texas, the Florida kids. Wagner right side. He's the California youngster. Ennis Haywood, in fact, was his first recruit out of Texas that they were ever able to sign, and that opened the door in the 1,200-plus high schools that play football in the state of Texas. You know, through all of that, there was, there was one comment that he said to us. He said, no matter what the stakes are, so I want my kids to have fun. Yep. He's done it the right way. And I think they're having a pretty good time tonight. Yeah. With seven minutes and 14 seconds left, up by 19. Tight end goes to the left side, two wide receivers to the right on second and eight. Rosenfels keeps it, has a man open. Oh my, can't get it to him. Pass intended for Kyle Knock, the sophomore out of Cedar Rapids, Iowa, whose dad's one of the assistant coaches on the Cyclone team. And they had everything that they wanted there. They had the short pass to J.J. Moses out here on this side. But what he wants, he wants the big chunk of change down the field. Just throws it a little too flat. Doesn't lead his big tight end, Kyle Knock. And Kyle Knock is the one who's suffering over this because tight ends spend <laughs> most of their lives blocking. Knock has five yeah. catches for 72 yards coming into this ballgame. He wanted that reception. He had run all the way across the field. He had lugged 250 some odd pounds there, and he was wide open. Missouri showing blitz. Here they come. They hand it off. Wagner just grabbed by the shoot tops. Knocked down by Justin Smith. It is a cold and windy night in Ames, Iowa. We're inside of Jack Trice Stadium along with James Lofton and Eric Clemens. I'm Ron Thulin as the Iowa State Cyclones hooking it up with the Missouri Tigers. And with 6.37 left to play in the ballgame, Iowa State leads it 39 to 20. Missouri was the first to score in this ballgame, and it has been Iowa State since then. Although Missouri has shown the ability to move the football, and on fourth down and seven, Cyclones are going for it. That's interesting, and Missouri's going to burn a timeout. And as Dan McCartney talks to his troops, we'll take a timeout. Hey, we got to talk. That stuff only protects my vital parts for about 30,000 miles. And then what happens? You got to change it. Make it easy on yourself. Give me Haviland Extended Life Antifreeze. It protects my sensitive parts for five years or 150,000 miles. That's five times longer than most of those conventional coolants. Now, let's talk oil. Hey! <laughs> Haviland Extended Life Antifreeze. Add more life to your car. What gives broadband broader impact? 
Texas Instruments programmable DSP. Hardware and software that integrates voice, video, and data into one seamless connection. From the world leader in DSP and analog, Texas Instruments. We asked the tough fans of the St. Paul Saints to test the Norelco Quadra Action Razor for 21 days. Electric Sting! But when they tried it, they started to like this advanced Norelco, with slots to cut the long hairs and holes that get the short stubble. They got a quick close shave without the nicks and cuts of a blade. By the end, these fans had fans of their own. The Quadra Action Razor. Try it for 21 days. It's guaranteed or your money back. Norelco, put it to the test. Craving more taste, more variety? All you need is 99 cents. Introducing the new 99 cent BK Cravers menu, including our Bullseye Barbecue Deluxe, Chicken Tender Sandwich, and Tasty Mozzarella Sticks. Just 99 cents every day. Steve Loney, offensive coordinator for the Iowa State Cyclones this year. Knew they could move the football when they play their kind of football, which they didn't do last week against AM, but they're doing it tonight. Name is pronounced Loney. Last week, after last week's ball game, they were calling him Looney. <laughs> we'll be back to Loney after this ball uh, game. I think so. And the talk of the town. Fourth down and seven. Iowa State going for it, and they're going to call motion on Wagner. Now the right side of the offensive line also is Herky Jerky. May have been Andy Stensrud, two men in motion. Dead ball. Dead ball. Ball start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. That's only the sixth penalty tonight for the Iowa State Cyclones. But it'll push him back another five yards, fourth and 12. What is the strategy of going for it at this point? Well, in the ball Sage Rosenfeld has also quick kick this that's year. Right. So that, that, that's another option that they have. And the quarterback needs to be at about seven yards. He's lined up at about seven yards. They realize that. So there check it, it out. You called it, but we have another penalty flag. Terry Turlington throwing it from the back. Ball, ball starts on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Well, now they'll bring in the regular punt team. You, you know what caused that? The offensive linemen did not want to run down and cover the punt, <laughs> so they kept moving. Those are smart guys. I'm impressed with them. Not only well, have they played well today, but Howard, Bodeau, Bruns, White, Stensrud, they said, we're not running down on this. Coach Looney, Looney <laughs> is Looney. <laughs> Coach McCartney wasn't too pleased about it, the former offensive lineman. Great job by the linemen. Gomez's left leg is okay. But it's not a good kick. Hits at the 27-yard line. Goes inside the 25, down to the 23-yard line. And it's Haywood doing a little Texas two-step with Pat Mangucci. 45-yard kick. Well, Iowa State, the uh, schedule looks like this coming up. After tonight, they have to go to a very unhappy Kansas State Wildcat team. Then they travel to Colorado. And then Terry Allen's Kansas Jayhawks come here on the 18th. But that Kansas State game, which, I mean, if you had looked at it way back here, you would have said, well, Kansas State, they're a dominant team. They're a top five, top mm -hmm. three team. Playing field has been leveled a little bit. Absolutely. Gilmore takes a shot as he gets up to the 28-yard line. Chris Whitaker out of East St. Louis, Illinois. There How about that? The Hall of Fame game in 1978, and these people are ready to go. The dot-com bowl, the inside dot-com bowl is here tonight. They had four bowl representatives here last week. Dan McCartney meeting with the bowl team yesterday. I think the, our boys down the Alamo Bowl may be coming up here taking a look. Derek Fox and his group. This is an exciting team, and you have to wonder how many Iowa State, if this lead holds up, and apparently it will, how many people will travel? Let's see, go to San Antonio in December where it's 70 degrees. Yeah. Third down and four for the Tigers. Get Trembello in that big fullback. This could be one of, they've run a lot of bootleg, but they've got Darius Outlaw on the outside with his ability to run the ball. Well, looking, firing, pass, incomplete. Penalty flag is thrown. Eric Spencer, the intended receiver. Jamarcus Powers is saying, no, he pushed off of me. Look how little I am. I wouldn't hold anybody. Well, Powers went down. He slipped and fell. 
I think we're going to get a hold on Pouncey because when you get pushed as a defensive back, your reaction is to grab and hold. Holding on the defense, 10 yard penalty, automatic first down. Our college football Saturday isn't done yet. We'll have the conclusion of our doubleheader coming up immediately following our game with Washington State taking on number 18 Oregon State in a Pac-10 battle. Make it a full day of college football right here on Fox Sports Net. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, Lewis Johnson standing by for that one. And as Kevin Frazier mentioned earlier, that should be a dandy. And this is for the telephone trophy dating back to 1959 when they installed the telephone lines here in Iowa. And Missouri coaches could hear the Iowa State coaches. Iowa State coaches heard the Missouri coaches. So they said, heck, let's build a trophy over it. That is the most original trophy in college football. That Tay Jackson. Incomplete. And that was floating in the Iowa win. Ironically, back in 1960, when it went to Missouri, the same problem happened. The coaches heard the other coaches. Hence the trophy, which isn't one of the prettiest trophies in America today. Stanford, did you guys have a trophy like a diploma trophy or something? Or hey, now be nice, be stock nice. Stock market trophy or something like that? We played for the Axe against the California Golden Bears. Outlaw keeps it scrambling inside the 50. Down to the 42 yard line, still showing his running ability. And that will put him over 100 yards rushing and that will be only the second 100 plus rushing performance by a Missouri Tiger this year. He's at 118 now. And, and for a quarterback, he's at 118. A couple of sacks can take him in the opposite direction because a sack counts That's against right. the quarterback's rushing yard. So Outlaw's done a fantastic job running the ball today. Pass is incomplete. That ball sailed right past Terrence Curry, number 18. We talked about Curry earlier. He had been a defensive back. He's only a sophomore. Comes in last year as a true freshman. First two ball games last year in 1999. He starts at cornerback. He plays the whole season at corner. Talked about the depletion. And now he moves over to the wide receiver position. I watch him run his routes. He looks like a pure receiver. Might stick at that position. They would love to see him play both ways, I'm sure. Outlaw looking for Pater. It has a man incomplete. Tay Jackson again. The second time it's hit his hands and dropped out. The young freshman out of Florida cannot haul him in tonight. Oh, he's got some speed, though. Yep, he's got those 4 4 wheels and those 10 flat hands. <laughs> no. Third down and 10. Outlaw keeps it. At the 35, he is stood up and dropped. Eric with 448 to play. With 448 to play, are we going to see the goalposts go down tonight, or are you going to protect them in our camera up there? Well, I tell you what, personally, I think it's too cold to touch any metal or anything <laughs> like that tonight. But I think some of the young people out here are going to try to run the field and give it a shot. But they are indestructible. They will not come down. Last year, this team beat Iowa. Kids tried to pull it down. It bends, but it does not break like the Iowa State defense tonight, huh? Oh, way to tie it in. Outlaw seeing some pressure on fourth and three. Scrambles forward inside the 30-yard line, and that'll be good enough for a first down. Four for four on fourth down efficiency tonight for the Missouri Tigers. Not much consolation. Those numbers throw them out the window. The only numbers that count in the upper left-hand portion of your screen, 39 to 20. First and 10 from the 30. Outlaw, look out, and he is going to go down. Reggie Hayward with a sack, his seventh of the year. They're saying he was down, no fumble. Reggie Hayward, who grew up idolizing Richard Dent and Walter Payton, on the sack, they lose 10. And it's all about effort at this stage of the ball game. Justin Bland, a power rush. And we're talking about Reggie Hayward, who is 6'5", 250, going against Justin Bland, who's 6'6", 346. So he's given up 
96 pounds and just bull rushes him back to the quarterback. They were adding some weight since he's been here at Iowa, Iowa State. Zach Averett hit from behind, almost lost the handle of the football. Adam Runk coming up to knock him down. 3.04 to play. Clock continues to roll. Iowa State leading by 19. That sets up a third down and 18. Crowd chanting defense. They are standing. Outlaw getting pressure from the back side, and he will go down. Kevin Durandi with a sack, his second of the year. And the second for Iowa State tonight. He's trying to hit number 24, Eric Spencer, at the bottom of your screen. You see Spencer starting to slip. Goes down, and that goes the chances of getting that ball up. But Spencer's also covered well. They had him covered on top and underneath. Fourth down and 23. Three wide receivers to the left, two to the right. This is it for Missouri. Outlaws pass complete. Drop. Gage had it and dropped it. They're saying it is an incomplete pass. Boy, it's almost unfair for, for uh, Darius Outlaw. He has played so well tonight. Kind of taking this Missouri Tigers team on his shoulders. And I think this young man from P Powder Springs, Georgia, has grown up quite yeah. a bit tonight. You see him getting some hugs, talking to his offensive coordinator, Bill Cubitt. Cubit still being the coach, but deep down inside, Cubit's yep. looking at that young man and saying, hey, he's made some strides tonight. Larry Smith has to be impressed with his young quarterback, and they believe that next week, next week, they may have a chance to get back Kurt Farmer. Well, Missouri will go down for their sixth loss in the last seven games, but they've gone down fighting. Larry Smith is an excellent football coach. His team came in prepared again tonight. They're just under man, a little thin as far as the depth. Left side, plenty of running room. Hiawatha Rutland, one of the freshman running backs out of Bradenton, Florida, on the carry. The fresh look, freshman running backs, they call them the Cyclone, Cyclone Pound Puppies, as dubbed by Ryan Harclough, along with Wagner and Rutland and Jermaine Billups out of Omaha, Pound Puppies. So Hiawatha getting a little running room tonight. Banks switching sides along with Knott. Rutland again, straight ahead running room. Now the executive producers of Fox Sports Net are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. Coordinating producers of college football Saturday are Roy Hamilton and Gary Garcia. Tonight's game produced by Mike Helling and directed by Ken Fouts. College football Saturday studio show produced by Lloyd Maxson, directed by Joe Whitus, and the vice president of field operations is... Andrea Jenkins. Look out, Dan McCarney. It's 40 degrees. It's going to get colder. Why ice water? Why not a bucket Just, of warm yeah. water? Yeah. Rutland again. Right side. Look out. Inside the 25, down to the 18-yard line. And there it goes, coach. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's cold. <laughs> See, if I'm a head coach, I ask for the rain jacket before we get up Come late in the ball that. game. Dan, it's cold, but that's something you're going to enjoy and remember a long time. Washington State, Oregon State, of course, coming up immediately following this. Fizz, Ram, and Lewis Johnson standing by. That is a man, ladies and gentlemen, that has put in a lot of hard work. He's taken his criticism, but now he's on top. And the clock will tick. Iowa State will have their first winning season since 1989, and they are now bowl eligible. Something they have not done since 1978. Congratulations, Dan McCartney. And that concludes the ball game. Iowa State 39, Missouri 40. Eric, Eric Clemens, Coach McCartney has got to be happy.
Well, we got a little audio trouble as the kids try to tear down the goalposts. They are said to be indestructible. Eric, let's try it again. Coach McCartney must be happy. Sorry about that, Coach. A little audio problem here. Now we got it straightened out. Six years ago when you took over this program, you promised you'd turn things around. I know the season isn't over yet, but you get your first winning record in 11 years. How does this make you feel right now? Well, fantastic. I'm just so proud of these kids and this coaching staff and these fans that are here. We've been through some real tough times. Tough times don't last. Tough people do. And we've had, we've had a lot of tough people to hang with us here. And I'm just proud that we finally can say we're a winner. We have we got a lot of games left in this season, but we're winners. We've got a winning season right now. We just got to keep trying to add to it. How do you how do you avoid feeling satisfied right now? You know, you got things left and this is a work in progress. What's your main message to your team the rest of the way? It's, it's a fantastic opportunity. I'm proud of them, but it's, each game gets bigger now. Each game has more meaning the rest of the season. Enjoy it. We're going to get right back to work on Monday, but I'm really proud of this football team. Right? How about being bowl eligible now? Does the bowl, I mean, what does that mean to you? Can you put that in the words, what it means to you and to this team to be eligible for one? I got some goosebumps that just shot up on me when you said that. It's a good feeling. We just got to keep doing everything we can to keep improving. I'm really, really proud of this football team. Dan McCarney, thank you very much. Good luck from here on out. Good luck bowling. Dan McCarney, a winner out here tonight with Iowa State they become bowl eligible guys Eric 59 percent of Iowa State's total offense tonight and total yards came on first down very effective tonight and Missouri wins at 39 20 but James Lofton I think that is the true essence of working hard and never vying from what you believe in as a coach well McCartney talked about winning tonight I think they were winners long before tonight because what he's done he's kind of put this program in into progress he talked about senior leadership they had great summer workouts the academics the recruiting now they are eligible for a bowl and, and what that bowl does not only do you get to play in it you get the rewards and all that but it gives you an extra three weeks of practice mm -hmm. to develop your players so people who go to bowls they end up with better players for the next season and their remaining schedule when you look at it we talked about the Kansas State ball game that comes up both Kansas State and Iowa State have two losses in conference play. So this is really a big bowl game because not only can you leapfrog Kansas State and, and who you recruit, who you get in, who you can attract, you can get to a bigger bowl. Bigger bowls mean bigger bucks for your school. The telephone trophy may be ringing and it may be a bowl, but that's it for Ames, Iowa. The final score, Iowa State wins at 39 to 20. Just a reminder, we are going to take a break, then we'll send you to the Pac-10 for Washington State and Oregon State. For James Lofton and Eric Clemens, I'm Ron Thulin. Iowa State wins it 39 to 20. College Football Saturday has been a presentation of Fox Sports Net.